Chippewa Hockey is on CCHN. The place to watch men's division three. Here's Connor Morgan out in front for Porzan And women's division two. But that's gonna get a shot on goal as she scores! Every ship, every goal, every game. Central Michigan has turned the corner. All in one place. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey. since the Timberwolves and Chippewas last played a hockey game. The two teams have gone in very different directions. Central Michigan has made it to the national tournament in the three seasons since, while Northwood hasn't even played a full season. Tonight, for the last time as Division Three clubs, the Chippewas and Timberwolves renew the rivalry of M20. Hi again, everybody. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. My name is Reagan Cleaves, alongside my broadcast partner, Devin Sarah, and we are so happy to have you guys with us for this evening's contest as the Central Michigan Chippewas and the Northwood Timberwolves face off for the first of two games this weekend. And Devin, this is a this is a rivalry that has been played since the second year of Chippewa hockey back in the 2013-14 campaign. And it's it's a rivalry that has been very one-sided, but in the last two seasons, these two teams haven't even played. What does it mean to have this rivalry back on the slate? Uh, it means everything. Back in the day, the Battle of M20 was everything for these two programs and because it's been such a long time and because this is the last time they will take on each other as men's division three opponents it means a little bit more and both these teams despite having losing records on the year play for everything tonight as they get later in their regular season schedule yeah northwood uh, is moving up to the men's division one uh, di next season so this is the last time these two teams will play at martin ice arena as m3 clubs and taking a look back a weekend ago central michigan is off to a uh, great start in the second uh, semester they are three and one to start and they are coming off a seven nothing win against isu they are and their top line was the biggest story in that jane adu andrew porzondek the likes of uh, Andrew Porzani able to get them the most production and Owen Campbell being the lethal shooter. Uh, it was a team effort. They blanked Illinois State, a much-deserved victory. First time they won three straights. This season, dating all the way back to last year in the Miami, Ohio Showcase, it was a great effort. They want to keep it going today. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, it's their longest winning streak of the season at three games apiece. And the backbone of that winning streak has been Caleb Woolery. The freshman from, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, has won his last three consecutive starts, and including his first career shutout last Saturday with 20 four saves. Nearly 100 saves over three games, Reagan. That first game against Oakland when he saved 40 plus set the tone for himself. He's on fire right now and Brendan Martin has made that an emphasis, keeping him in the lineup for the fourth straight start for him. Something we haven't been able to say all season and I for one am excited. I know Chippewa fans are as well. Yeah, Caleb Woolley certainly has earned himself that fourth consecutive start here tonight. That seven nothing win yesterday or last weekend did not do anything for CMU in terms of the division standings. They still sit at fifth, being leapfrogged by Michigan uh, with uh, Michigan's uh, series victory last weekend. Lawrence Tech sits at the top of the MCHC East with 23 points. SVSU, Oakland, and Michigan right behind them in uh, with 15, 13, and 12 points respectively. Lawrence Tech is all but locked up that number one spot coming in, going into the tournament, and they are uh, they are a team who, un in unlike years past, that top seed doesn't get a first round behind. No, it doesn't. And what's different too is the fact that you're going to have to uh, shuffle around the likes of Saginaw Valley State, Oakland. Uh, Lawrence Tech seems like the perennial front runner to make it to the conference final, but we saw Grand Valley State, who wasn't a favorite last year, or the, rather two years ago, go on and beat Hope. So still anybody's game, but this lineup is starting to take form with likes of Lawrence Tech, Saginaw, Oakland. That's most likely what you're going to see the top three be going into that tournament. Yeah, and the CMU's opponent tonight, Northwood, is dead last in the division. They are 3-7 and seven through 10 games with only six points, one point behind Adrian and uh, Michigan Flint, respectively. So it's a tight race at the bottom. Northwood will most likely play Lawrence Tech. That's a team that they took to overtime earlier on this season. A couple of games around the MCHC East tonight. Uh, top 15 matchup, Oakland hosts. Michigan at Birmingham Ice Arena at 8:30. That's a must-watch game if you are able to do so on the east side or on the east side of the state. Uh, Lawrence Tech, uh, now ranked number two in the nation, uh, hosts Pitt, Pitt Johnstown tonight, and then Michigan Flint is on the road at number 11 Calvin. Those are your MCHC East games 
tonight. We'll step aside when we come back. We'll, t we'll flip the camera down to the ice, and we'll take a look at the two teams down below us here at Martin Ice Ring. It's the Chippewas and the Timberwolves coming up on CCHN. To Martin Ice, Rena Reagan, Cleves, and Devin Sarah high atop center ice is Central Michigan and Northwood about 20 minutes away from puck drop in the final battle of M20 at the D3 level here at Martin Ice Arena. These two teams, Devin, have, uh, in the past have very different tracks in their seasons, but uh, Northwood for the first time in three years has been able to field a team. They've uh, five and 10 on the season through 15 games. They have uh, struggled a little bit out of the gate, but they have some big wins. Huge wins. They took down number 11, Calvin, in the first weekend of their season, 3-1. to one. Lost the first game 6 nothing. but we walked away from that series saying, wow, this Northwood team, which is so young, full of the high school ranks, the likes of Midland High, um, some talent around the USPHL, they lit the world on fire. Afterwards, they settled in with a couple of wins over U of M Flint, good ones against Adrian, and they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best. Michigan only lost by two goals, same with Michigan State. So this Northwood team has shown us glimpses of, of hope uh, throughout the season. And this is a team that is headlined by a lot of rookies. Only two players return from that team in the 2021 campaign, and they're led by a couple of guys that haven't been on their team, including uh, Milos Todorovic. Yeah, and Todorovic, who's from Canada, has played all over the place. The likes of the Blind River Beavers, uh, Finlandia, and the NCAA Division Three ranks them. Sort of a comparison to Nathan Bottles right there. Uh, they've got some leadership among those young guys. And remember, they've got two guys on this squad from the former Northwood uh, team from three years ago, uh, that being the likes of Thomas uh, Bechtal and uh, Colin Reeder. So they've got some leadership there to succinctly help the young guys. Yeah, and on the other side of the ice, Central Michigan, of course, uh, all of you are familiar with this team, but this second semester for, for this team, Devin, has been very, very different from their first. They uh, lost uh, their fifth consecutive game back in that opening game of this uh, semester against Oakland, but since then it's been three consecutive wins. Yeah, and I think the conversation with Brennan Martin has been, hey, we've taken some lumps here and there against Florida Gulf Coast and Grand Valley. What do you do to settle back in the second semester? Control what you can. Forget about the rankings. Forget about the national stage. And they've done that. You know, they took care of business in that split against Oakland, and rather, they took care of business against Illinois State, outscoring them 13-1. to So you look at their last three, and you say, well, that went against Oakland, 
Oakland easily their biggest of the year, which was at the time against the number 12 team. Oakland dropped one spot to that. But look, I mean, this team has found a spark here and there. That top line we talked about earlier in the pregame show getting going, and they're getting good support on the back end despite a lot of injuries. Yeah, indeed, and once again, they'll turn to freshman netminder Caleb Woolery, who uh, won his third consecutive game last week, include, uh, which was his first career shutout, stopping 24 saves in that win against Illinois Isn't State. Isn't that crazy we're saying that, first career I shutout? Know. It seems like he's had and one already this year. it's the first shutout the entire season for any Chippewa netminder to yeah. add on to that. So uh, a big game last week for the freshman netminder. Um, take a look at the history between these two teams. It has been all maroon and gold. 15-1 and one in the 16-game series, including two playoff wins in the first round of the MCHC. Uh, tournament back in 2018 and 2020. Last time these two teams met was back on March 6, 2021 in that shortened COVID year. 17-3 the final for Central Michigan uh, capping off a weekend in which they outscored the Timberwolves 28-4 but it's going to be a much different series this year. Yeah and the ironic part, I'm going to age myself collegially here. <laughs> I witnessed that game. That was the first time I got the chance to watch this team call this team on a radio call on Mixler.com and it seemed like they had three different players at the time with hat tricks. I remember the likes of Brennan Nelson uh, being a big factor in that game. Brennan Martin of course got his goals and on this team, Andrew Porzondek at the time was a young up-and-coming forward. He got his dues as well. So, yeah, it's been one-sided, but you can wipe that cleanly because both these teams look completely different. Yeah, indeed. And as you see the players coming off the ice down below us, we'll bring it back up here into the broadcast booth after a short break and take a look at the impact players and your keys to the game presented by Optum X Sports. It's the pregame show ahead of Central Michigan and Northwood coming up in about 15 minutes here on CCHN. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth here at Martin Ice Arena. Once again, Reagan Cleaves alongside Dev and Sarah. Now it's time to take a look at our keys, keys to the game and our impact players. First, our impact players, Devin, who do you got? On the Northwood side, we're going to start. It's their uh, core leader in 
Milos Todorovic, the native of Cayuga, Ontario, Canada. I think I said that right. Former NCAA Division III player with Finlandia. He's led the way with this team, riding a three-game goal streak. He had two in their win uh, two weeks ago uh, over Davenport and had a goal apiece in those losses to Saginaw Valley State. He's the most veteran player on this team. He's the most experienced, and he's been putting it in the back of the net. He's my player to watch for that. Also, an honorable mention is Benjamin Haney, son of Women's Division II head coach for CMU. Uh, Chris Haney, Benjamin Haney, scored his first career goal in the ACHA last week in their 8-2 loss to Saginaw. So the emotional favorite there for him, uh, uh, forward out of Midland High School. Uh, you know, having his dad here in attendance is big for him. He wants to do well in front of his family, and uh, for that reason, he's my impact player to watch for that. On the CMU side, we have to look at some of those top-line guys, specifically Owen Campbell. And why? Well, Campbell has been the jump start to that top line group, I would argue. He's been a really good puck carrier sometimes, not turning the puck over as much as he was earlier in the year, and doing a good job distributing it to poor Zondick and Nadu. Yeah, and adding on to that, Owen Campbell uh, right now leads the team with the longest active point streak, five games yeah. dating back to late December. Yeah, and on the other side of things, you have to think about the defensively. I'm looking at number nine, Will Rapoon, who's stepping into the lineup tonight for Sam Camara, who has been really labeled out of this game, not sure exactly why, but Rapoon, who had to step up last week when Braden Keel went out of the lineup uh, suddenly out of uh, warm-ups, and we won't see Keel for a long time as well. I think Rapoon's got to step up tonight. I think he can be good. I think he can have a really good game because of his relentless effort getting to the puck, working in the corners. Rapoon and Campbell are my players to watch for CMU. So they're your players to watch, and our keys to the game, Devin, I mean, it, the special teams have been really good for Central Michigan. What what do you got? <laughs> well, we're going to start there, right? <laughs> what, 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 why fix what's broken? Nothing's broken there. Uh, they figured it out on the power play specifically. Uh, they've been able to get not just the first line going, but the second. I think shorthandedly, be on the watch for them to to, to to put some fire in there. You know, Nathan Bottles had that rare shorthanded goal against Illinois State. And I think more than just the goal itself, that was an attitude thing of Bottles gaining confidence where he was scratched in one of those Oakland games last week. And he said to Brendan Martin, this lineup, watch what I can do. We know the scoring droughts have been a thing with this team. Watch them shorthandedly. Second, I want to see them clean up the faceoffs. I think this is a really important game for them to go up against some guys that are a little bit uh, undersized, inexperienced in the dots, able to work pucks out of your own zone, get some good faceoffs tonight and clean stuff up there. And finally, keep Sam Z or Sam Zavison, <laughs> keep Caleb Woolery on his hot note. Northwood is surprisingly a team that finds a way to get stuff to the dirty area. They have a very similar style to CMU. Uh, Joe Cooper runs some of that play. A former CMU player, one of the big stories today, and he wants his guys to crash. They did that a lot against Saginaw Valley State. They try and force turnovers in your own end. So I think Woolery has to be sharp, specifically on his edges, on his posts, and that will be keys to victory for CMU today. Yeah, we'll certainly see how the young netminder does in his fourth consecutive start. He's won three straight. Let's see if he can make it a fourth here tonight. L taking a look at the lineup tonight, scratches for Central Michigan. Will Rapoon has been slated into the lineup after initially being labeled a scratch, uh, replacing uh, Sam Kamara, who was a last-minute scratch. So uh, Sam Kamara is now a scratch. Andrew Siraki, Andrew Miller, Braden Kielb, uh, Austin Ritter, uh, uh, Christopher Martin, uh, the two netminders out tonight are Nick Wilson, Lauren Jones, followed by Chris Armantrout, Ryan Grolo, and Josh Gilgren. So those are your scratches for Central Michigan. And on the Northwood side of things, Dominic Clavon and Aiden Gome are both out tonight for the Timberwolves. Your starting netminders tonight are going to be uh, Caleb Woolery, as we've already mentioned multiple times here tonight, getting his fourth consecutive start. And on the other side, uh, their starting netminder is Aiden Schultz for the Timberwolves. He has uh, shouldered the brunt of the load this year, played 12 games for them with four wins. We'll take a deeper look at, at the netminders after the National Anthems when we come back. Here, puck drop coming up next on CCHN between Central Michigan and Northwood here on YouTube.
Starting goaltenders for both teams today. First, the visitors, the Northwood Timberwolves. They're turning to their veteran Aiden Schultz this year through 12 games played. Four wins, eight losses, a 3.76 goals against average, a .890 save percentage. On the CMU side, they're turning to their uh, freshman net miner, making his fourth straight start, Caleb Woolery out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. 11 games this year, a 3.21 goals against average and a .902 save percentage, looking for four straight wins. Those are your starting netminders. Thank you, Devin. Central Michigan will turn to that top line, which last weekend in their in their 7-0 win had eight points, four goals, four assists of Nadu, Porzondik, and Campbell. Their defensive pairing tonight is Spencer Messina and Lucas Hutton. The Timberwolves will send out on their defensive pairing uh, Trevor Peacock and Thomas Bechtel, along with Ben Haney. Trevor, er, uh, Thomas Kroll, and Devin Gooley, they, they're starting forwards. We've got 20 minutes on the clock, and the final game of the Battle of M20 here at Martin Ice Arena is underway. Central Michigan quickly forced back into their own end by a Northwood forecheck, which Central Michigan last year, or last weekend, Devin, had a really good forecheck, as this is going to go against, uh, against Central Michigan for icing here, but their forecheck last weekend really proved the difference in that ISU game. Well, they had their way against the team that they had the uh, physical and skill advantage of. And, you know, we talked about that top line, Porzondik, Nadu, and Campbell making up the bulk of that. But they got everybody involved, and from start to finish, they dominated. Yeah, they did face off to the right of Caleb Woolery, won by Northwood. Bechtel's shot from the left point goes wide. And the rebound across the way, Porzondik flips that off of a stanch and it took a crazy hop out to neutral ice. Nifty touch pass ahead to Jay Nato. He's forced to the outside there by Peacock. On behind the net, Porzondik on the wraparound. Great save there by Schultz. Got the left pad down tight to the post in time. This is flipped up and out of play as Spencer Messina pressured by Donald Gooley. Out of Harrison Township. Well, let's recap some of our keys to the game real quick for CMU. First, they need to be really good on the penalty kill. They were perfect against Illinois State last week, something they haven't done all season. Second key of the game was get your goaltender uh, get involved, make sure Woolery is comfortable and staying hot. And finally, clean up your face offs because you need to get them good against this Northwood team that's a little bit undersized, a little undermanned. Great nifty feed ahead to Dodorovich, but he couldn't handle the puck at the Chippewa blue line. And Robertson will turn it up. Near side, Morgan to the outside, into the circle, shot, scores! Connor Morgan! His eighth of the year on a snipe through the five hole. It's one nothing. Third straight week, CMU strikes within the first three minutes, and this one exactly in a minute. You said it yourself, north of the other way had numbers. They worked it up the right side. It was turned over quickly that time out of the back end. Robertson was involved, and Morgan sprung it up right wing, just outpaced his man to the puck, and Schultz, the first shot against him, beats him cleanly under the right pad. Good job by Morgan there. Yeah, and it's a great shot by Connor Morgan off that rush down the right side. Schultz passed it ahead to him, passed, to a, passed ahead to him on the wing. And CMU scores first. The 13th time they've done so this season. They've won eight of those contests. So when they score first, success does tend to follow. And we'll see if that's the case throughout the rest of the night. So CMU up 1-0, Connor Morgan. Striking early. Boy, has he been hot lately, Devin. Especially with a lackluster start to this year, he has had a couple of really good games the last couple of series. Yeah, and that Oakland first game, although they lost it, he was a tone setter. He's always been a grinder in those corners. It's his MO lookout turnover. Now here's a turnover down the right side. A shot right on off the stick of Scaturro. And Woolery was able to make a fairly easy save, but it looked like it might have caught him a little bit off guard with how slow that came off the stick. Yeah, no doubt. And the speed was able to catch up there to number 97 in Scaturro. De La Salle High School. This is a young Northwood team that has a lot of times had opportunities to turn the puck over. They like to hustle and get two men to it. First good save by Woolery. Yeah, quick save off the face off. The shot there came from Ryan Zwick. Whoa. Another shot blocked. I was hunting in there, redirecting that one. It was perfect tip in front. And Problem is it was in front of his own net. Yeah. Here's a pass ahead to 
Andrew Miller. We haven't seen a ton of him this year. Only his seventh game, but last year, he played a bulk of the games, 33 in his career over the past two seasons. Well, he's been in and out of that fourth line. They've had a good rotation going with the likes of Vasilovich, Isaac Hopp, Andrew Siraki, and when his number's called, I think when I think of Andrew Miller, it's a lot of that just scrappiness. You don't really expect him to go out there and light the world on fire, just do your job and sustain a system. And so far, CMU is controlling the tempo, obviously, with that one nothing score. And now it's a point of, do you extend this? Do you keep this pressure on a young Northwood team that, look, they're coming off a tough loss. Joe Cooper said to me, no if and buts about it, former CMU player, we just weren't good enough against Saginaw. Haney shot from the left wall, blocked away by Caleb Buller, and you mentioned that Saginaw Valley State series was a tough one for Northwood. They got swept by the number 15 team in the country. And it's a tough place to play. We were talking with Cooper about it before the game, Devin. The, this Northwood team being all but two of them freshmen, they got a little bit shell shot going into the bay. Well, it's a hard place to play. I mean, any team that goes into Saginaw Bay Ice Arena, you and I know that environment. Oh, look Whoa. out, Porzondek in behind the defense, and he scores! Andrew Porzondek puts on the moves. It's 2 nothing. So this turnover up the left side, it's all because of Owen Campbell. Hems his man to the left boards, can't find that puck under him, and Porzondek is the cherry picker, forces a two-on-one, and he forced Schultz. He committed to the right side of the post. Schultz did all the way, and Porzondek was patient enough to wait for him to commit to that side, wrap it around for an easy tuck on the weak side. Yeah, they are controlling 100%. For Zondek's fifth goal in the last three games for him, and look out, a shot from distance, and it handcuffed Schultz off the cuff of his glove, and he had to reach out and smother the puck for a stoppage of play. That's two goals in the first three minutes and 22 seconds for the Central Michigan squad. And that's gonna be an assist for Campbell, and that top line now, Reagan, that's nine points in three games. They've been the main Benefactory of this winning streak, the longest they've had all season in three. And the first time they won back-to-back -back games at home was that first win against Illinois State. Deflection out in front, it's clear to the point. Kept in though, another shot from the point by Peacock trickled wide. Down the corner, Robert Robertson worked it free. Jace Johnson working up the ice. He had three assists in the 7-0 win last week. Now it's out in front. Morgan, his second opportunity was knocked away there by Schultz, and Northwood will move out now. Oh boy, an unlucky flip out to the bench by Connor White that time. And boy, I, I, if you're a Northwood fan, the, the concern for Aiden Schultz is there for sure. This is a goalie that has kept them in many games this year, the likes of that Calvin win. He's the one that was in net in that three to one victory, saved 35 on 36. But tonight, I mean, three shots and he's gotten basically none of it. And CMU is forcing the turnovers on this young Northwood team. Fifteen thirty-three to go here in period one. And Devin, this Central Michigan team is out to another fast start, but you talk about the net mining for Northwood. Aiden Schultz has played 12 games. This is 13th, and he's struggled. But he's still got relatively decent numbers. Nathan Bottles working in, his backhand lifted high. And it's worked up top. Oh, good poke away there from Isaac Hopp, but he's able to throw it around the boards once he gained re regained control. Up through center, Northwood trying to move it up, and here's Harfoot. He'll take it and dump it in. Caleb Woolery out of his net to play it. Five minutes gone in period one. CMU up 2-0 off of goals from Morgan and Porzondek. Now Isaac Hopp tried to get too cute at center ice, but he was able to recover and gain possession. He'll flip it in off of the defenseman's stick, and Northwood will have to regroup. So go for icing against Northwood. Northwood head coached by Mike Vezina. Big story today was Jordan Cooper, former CMU Chippewa Reagan, returning for the first time since taking up this team with Northwood. And, I mean, in a short span, we're talking nine months here, he's assembled a team with a full lineup, scratches involved, and the big story out of this team was the fact that they're jumping to the Division I ranks 
later this not, or right next season. Yeah, and a lot of that, uh, built, uh, a lot of that building has been getting a lot of freshmen, getting a lot of recruits into this Northwood system that's enabled them to get and to get the players required to fill out a roster. Yeah, and, and it's a good sight to see for this team. I remember three years ago when. Oh, we're... look out, a giveaway in the slot, saved by Woolery. Able to get a shoulder on the Thomas Kroll shot. He's looking for his fourth of the year, but Woolery shuts the door with 14-11 to go in the first. It's a nice job by Benjamin Haiti, one of our players to watch for Northwood, working up the left side of the wall. Originally lost the handle of this puck, but Kroll is looking for that kind of turnover, and CMU's playing behind the net in the trapezoid. A good job being aware there, and Woolery the better stop. French can't win the faceoff for Northwood. The puck bounces around in the slot. It's chopped up to the point and out. Owen Campbell couldn't get through Ben Bolin. It's picked up by French. And he'll just flop it in wide of Woolery. Rapoon, who was a late addition to the lineup tonight, replacing Sam Kamara. Able to force some pressure and get Northwood out of the zone. Northwood still off. Side as Todorovic was a little bit too eager to get into the zone. Yeah, and this is something where early in this one you find a 2-0 deficit. Uh, you're, you're really in a mindset of a player, I feel, of, well, we got to find something quick, right? We got to turn something over, swing this thing back, or it could get out of hand. And You know Northwood in their only game, they'll play against CMU as a Division Three squad. Uh, they want to find that spark, obviously. It just hasn't been there so far. Still very young in this game, however. And Northwood's last win in this series came back in 2016. It was a 5-4 win. Now Campbell and Porzondik up the wing and a nice deflection in front, but Schultz is able to get a glove on it and hold on with 13.26 to go in the first. It's been a long time. I think the last Northwood win they had was in 2016, over almost seven years ago. It's crazy to think it's been that long, but believe it or not, it's longer than you've been here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way long, right? Maybe longer than Sean Bednar and Tyler Markov were here as well. Former former broadcasters for CCHF. And that that win back in 2016, 5-4 here at Martin, the only win in the history for Northwood against Central Michigan. Yeah, and a lot of those games have been closer than that series indicates. Scoturo's shot was blocked. Oh, a nifty save off the backhand deflection there by Zwick. Woolery had to be sharp on that one. This play, this puck went up and out of play in the Central Michigan bench, so we'll have yet another stoppage. And, and to talk about Kyle Robertson quick, uh, senior out of Livonia, Michigan this year, nine assists. He had a big weekend the last two times against Oakland, that win in the two to one. He had an assist. Illinois State, he was all over blocking shots when Illinois State, the rare chances they got I mean, Robertson, in a, in a dim light, what was the middle part of the season, was one of the most consistent parts of this group. And, you know, remember Florida Gulf Coast, Reagan, so we're going to call this offside. He took a bad check to the head along his own bench from a Florida Gulf Coast player, and he bounced back up, got back yeah. in that game five minutes later. I don't think anybody in this the, the building at the time could believe it. He's a tough guy and has been really instrumental in this three-game win streak. Yeah, he's... The team leader in assists with nine to go along with four goals, uh, 10 assists. Long shot in, Schultz laid leather on it and put it to the side of the net. Now Northwood trying to start the breakout but an errant pass up the boards, couldn't find its intended target and the Chippewas hold the zone. Hop, couldn't get to the puck in time, Northwood lifts it out, look out. There's Weston Dorf. Feeding it out in front, and it was a great rub out on Lauren Brem. Thereby, Clements coming back defensively. Another shot, turn wide. And now Bowerson moves it out. Hop. We'll dump it in. Getting an extra shove there on Lauren Brem. It's been a little bit of a physical game from this Northwood squad. Yeah, they have, and Brem the fastest chance he's had. Good job by Clements there, putting out that fire, forcing him to go wide of the left glove of Woolery. Northwood escapes in danger there, clearing a loose puck in front of Schultz, but it will go down the ice for icing. 11.51 to go. 
Fans, don't forget that the CME Club Hockey Network YouTube channel is your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full-game broadcasts for men's Division Three and women's D2 hockey. Just go to YouTube and search CMU Club Hockey Network to find the channel and turn on those never get never turn on those notifications to never miss a moment. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey and Reagan. Great job on the studio show that released this morning. You had a nine-minute breakdown. You're telling of the me top good 25. job. You were up till five editing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was up into the wee but hours. Hey, that, I heard the birds chirping. That show, that's for sure. that show looks so kidding, good because of what you do. You, you're the editor on that for the last two seasons, and it's it shows, man. You are a you do a really good job with that. Thank you, buddy. And you do the impossible. You make me look good. I've discovered what uh, new flavors of coffee are. <laughs> I really like Folgers, but you know, McCafe isn't bad oh, as well. Nice, nice. Do you ever make any at home? No. Okay. My roommate won't let me use his. Uh, whatever Stingy it's called. roommate, coffee maker, <laughs> yeah. a Keurig. Yeah, a Keurig. Thank you. Look, at that. I'm not a coffee guy. I had to. I had to last. I'm night the coffee sure. guy. <laughs> Play back underway. Julian Johnson will take it and dump it down the ice. Icing waved off for some reason, leaving Northwood a little bit befuddled. But they'll try and march up ice. Look out! A great intercept there by Jay Nadeau at neutral ice. Bouncing puck eventually worked it free to Porzondik. He played it off the wall with 11 minutes to go. Campbell. Past the defense, lost the puck though. He'll take his man into the corner and give a little extra shove there to Thomas Kroll. Northwood, another errant pass that will go for icing yet again. This has been a very stop and start opening 10 minutes of this game, including two Central Michigan goals, and those feel like they happened a half hour ago at this point. <laughs> right. Yeah, when the sloppiness picks up, it is very apparent, right? And, and that's more on the Northwood side, trying to get that bench going. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of appearances by Todorovic trying to touch this one up and get it to his, his D-man. You know, Bolin has been involved, but they just kind of sloppy play overall. And something this is similar to is when CMU has played the likes of uh, in Valley State or Lawrence Tech where they can't get going. And when you're struggling, you constantly ice the puck because you're trying to get that breakout and desperately get off. And they can't do it. So it just delays things more all along the period. And as we're talking... Another race. Yep. Yeah, and they're feeling it. And, you know, it's still like a very, very young in this one. But you know, CMU's at, at, a, at a crucial point, quote unquote, right? You can really control the tempo of this one. You know, they have really gotten to the offensive zone with ease and cycled the puck up to the point. And Northwood really hasn't had a ton of chances early in this game. They've been able to work it up the wall, but CMU's uh, defense has done a really good job at hemming the Timberwolves in at their own blue line. As soon as Get I say that, now. Thomas Kroll moves up the right wing and out. Yeah, good job by him with pressure coming up the right wing. As we're just over halfway through the opening period, look out, at, that puck's knocked away by Todorovic and lays at the side of the net. Good job by Jay Nader to get to that puck in time before White. And we have a stoppage of play here. And a penalty coming up. It's gonna go against Central Michigan here, yeah, they're 950. Gonna send. They're going to send off Kyle Robertson here for getting in behind. Of Todorovic behind the net. It's going to be a roughing call. As we talk about how much Robertson has impacted this team offensively, he's also the leader in penalty minutes. Those are his 60th penalty minutes of the season. So Northwood to go to work in the offensive end. They've got the puck in the corner. Harfoot trying to work it free. Up the wall to McCarthy. Center point to Dorovic. Down the wall right back to McCarthy. To Dorovic, high slot. Works it with a shot. Saved by Woolery. Rebound is loose in front of the freshman. And it's put wide. Northwood power play. Not very good. Listed on the ACHA website is 9.1% on the year. Four goals on 44 attempts. That's a Morgan sidesteps a check there by McCarthy. Yeah, that, that's a fire put out by Todorovic. Morgan, who had that opening tally, Reagan, was one-on-one -on -one against him. And a skilled player, former NCAA Division III, controlling it. Two, NC, two former NCAA Division III players on the ice tonight. Nathan Bottles for Central Michigan. He spent some time with Arcadia. Played 24 games in the 21-22 season. 11 points in that span, and then Milos Todorovic 
in the twenty er, in the two seasons from twenty one to twenty three at five points in twenty nine games with the Finlandia Lions. Northwood with forty two seconds to go on the power play. Penalty on Robertson. Good job by Nathan Bottles to poke that puck out to center ice past Connor White. Northwood will just rifle this in. And the confidence level really isn't there. They're backing up Northwood's defenders to the blue line, pressuring there. Gooley has it center point. Long shot, glove save by Woolery. Had to reach out with that one and snag it, but he does. He is able to get the stoppage of play with 8.30 to go, 20 seconds to go in the Robertson pack penalty. Colin Reeder out of Brighton, Michigan. Two assists on the air. He's looking for a tip in front, trying to screen the eyes. And Woolery, one thing that's been underrated is his defensemen in front have been clearing the lane, giving him easy looks at the puck. And Reagan, that's not something we could say earlier in the year because a lot of the times it was CME defenders who were clogging up the middle and taking away his eyes. Northwood has the puck once again on the power play with eight seconds to go. Gooley has it on the return feed. Shot through traffic and another save by Woolery through traffic with two seconds to go on the power play. Yeah, that one had a good tip sauce, right? But he found that in the glove. And that's a good penalty kill to start things. Still two minutes, two seconds left in it. But I like how they're, they're forcing Northwood to make a decision at the blue line. And more times than not, they go to try and retreat back to the neutral zone. And give Northwood credit. They don't have the numbers on the power play, but they've done a good job, especially tonight in, this, in their first opportunity. They've cycled the puck well, forced Caleb Wooler to make a couple of good saves. Power play is over. CMU one for one on the penalty kill tonight. Buck is now tied up behind Caleb Wolverine. Squirts free. Scooped up by Nadu. Lifted it ahead, but it was intercepted and dumped back in by Northwood. 7.40 to go in period one. This is dumped the length of the ice, icing the signal and the call as Campbell couldn't beat out Peacock for the icing. That's unfortunate play. Nadu's trying to work this up the wall and touch it up for Campbell get him across the red line, unfortunately misses. And boy, this is uh, not as entertaining as you'd like with all this start and stop. And both teams are really trying a lot and their four checks instead of systematically moving. They're doing a lot of flipping in the air and trying to make wild plays happen. Face off in the Chippewa and off the tie up. Northwood trying to control, but Porzonic using the reach and winding it around the boards now. So since the start of that power play, Northwood's kind of had control of this game. CMU looking to regroup and start the breakout left to right. They're wearing the white uniforms here in this first period. Northwood wearing those dark blues. A little bit different to what they used to wear back when you last saw them, Devin. Yeah, they had this very bright bluish color, but these unis are probably the nicest I've ever seen. It's an upgrade. And it's a throwback to Central Michigan's old gold uniforms from a season ago. They were retired at the beginning of this season in favor for these white ones, which the chip was brought into circulation last year. Three on three for CMU. Bishop over the line, shot saved by Schultz. Three down up the wall. Bishop unable to control and Scaturro gets it out, but it's flopped right back in by Will Rapoon. Good around pursuit the by this fourth line, Reagan. Yep. Forcing Northwood to make quick decisions. I think that's been the key so far. You know, among all the things that Central's done to force Northwood to ice the puck a lot, they, they make them have to make a decision, forcing two defenders on one forward. And when you're a young, inexperienced forward like that, it, it can be tough to make decisions quickly. Caleb Wooler left that puck behind his own net. Northwood got to it, but Kanana couldn't do anything with it. He got it up to the point, shot through traffic, blockered away. Looks like it actually went off the stick of Caleb Woolery. Loose puck now on the near half boards. Cleared up the wall, Kanana kept it in, deflected by Ryan Zwick into the corner. Just over 5.40 to go in period one. Devin will have the first intermission report here on CCHN. Take a look at the new ACHA top 10. Good save there by Woolery as he gloves it with 5.30 to go. Is that, that top 10, not a ton of movement, but Colby College still sticking up in the top five. They're ranked at number six, falling one spot. They're, they are the surprise team of this season. Yeah, out of the NECA, any CHA, I don't think anybody expected them, 
or Dartmouth to be that high. And the reason they are is you look at that strength of schedule they have. It's it's among the weakest in the ACHA. But here's the thing. Which might confuse a lot of people. It would. But when you look at the teams they face that have had wins against top opponents, uh, Central Maine Community College had that win over Michigan State, number seven. That happened just before those two teams played. And that had a big emphasis on... Yeah, that had, I mean, that had a number nine, excuse me, sorry. They were number seven, dropped two spots. But that had a big emphasis on things. And that 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 New, New England area, a lot of teams you wouldn't expect, Reagan. That's what you said in the show this morning. Look out. Northwood on thought. the pursuit. But CMU able to escape a jam there and get the puck out. 4.40 to go. In the opening frame, CMU up 2-0 off of early goals from Porzondic and Morgan. I finish my point, Reagan. The biggest thing, if you had to give one thing, is their quality of wins. They've had many, many more plus five goal wins. They beat a team 17 to four earlier this year. And if you win by five or more goals, that is everything in your strength of schedule, in your strength of win. Northwood, once again, creating havoc in the Central Michigan end. And to start something, bottles the other way though. Danced around one man, lost the puck before Beamish goes crashing into the boards with Cooper Harfoot. Bottles on the near side, able to work it free into the corner. Cut Bechtel up with a high stick, uncalled. It's back in the corner, centered out in front, and Beamish is one-timer. He fanned on it, but he almost put it through on a changeup. Now Bechtel behind the net. Worked it free for McCarthy. His stretch pass just too far for Westendorf, but the forward was able to get a stick on it to negate the icing. Tell you what, this game really is turned on that penalty called on Robertson about halfway through this period, Devin. It looked to be all Central Michigan forcing Northwood to play some really sound defensive hockey. But since that power play, Northwood has been putting the pressure on the Maroon and Gold. They have, but it's been mainly through the neutral zone, and they're not really allowing Central is too many shots to Woolery. Northwood's carrying the puck a lot more because of their pursuit. Now you get a one-on-one. -on -one. Nifty feet ahead. On one. To White. White to the left side. Shot score! Connor White, his third of the year, and the Timberwolves have cut the deficit in half. This starts out in the slot area. Todorovic, out of his own end, works this puck free, gets it up the straight one-on-one, -on -one, and what a pass up to White. Gets the two-on-one developed with the support behind. And he has options here. He can go across the slot area, back to him, and get a, a, a moving screen on Woolery. He goes straight on, and he beats him over that left shoulder, Reagan. That's a rare goal to allow by Caleb Woolery. And Northwood, all of a sudden, what you just said to your credits, busts in. That's the first time Woolery's allowed a goal since the second period of that first Illinois State game. Dangerous fall in the corner there by Bishop. Couldn't see him get up and he'll tag up to allow his team to go into the zone. Northwood getting it out. Robertson couldn't keep it in. He'll turn around and send it right in on Schultz who deflects it to the corner with 2.20 to go in the opening period. Saved by Schultz on the curveball from Rapoon. Taken by Scuturo up the right wing. Behind the net on the loose puck, Ryan Zwick. Lost the puck to Robertson as Central Michigan tries to regain the mojo they had in the opening 10 minutes. Oh, a big hit there by Robertson, upended Zwick. And the, his feed too far for Morgan, but he was able to get a stick on it and dump it down. Can you say that's robo time worthy? Eh, maybe a little bit bigger hit. <laughs> All right. I'll save it for later. Good pass up the right wing. Skaturo over the line. In with a shot, and Woolery makes the save. Faint like he was going to let it go, but the referee gave him a quick whistle. 131 to go. Yeah, good work by Northwood out of their own corners. I mean, that's part of the difference maker right now. Central on the, the eye glance still controls the play. They still dictate what happens to the neutral zone. But it's when you get to that attacking zone, Northwood is starting to put out their own kind of dangerous attempts. And biggest thing, they're not allowing centering attempts on their netminder. 
in Schultz. That's resulting in Northwood looking like they're getting back in this game. Here's Jace Johnson, leading the three on two. Oh, a big hit there on Trevor Peacock. Lit him up along the half wall. Maybe that's the hit that Central Michigan needs to change the momentum of this game. Nifty touch pass ahead. Northwood comes the other way. Chippewas are going to have to defend. Hutton to the outside with 62 seconds to go. Behind the net, Gooley. Hassled by Messina. Jace Johnson coughed it up. Behind the net, Haney on the wraparound. Threw it out in front. Rebound is sent right on, and a penalty is going to come up against Central Michigan here. Hutton's going to go off for another Northwood penalty or power play here with 46 seconds to go in the first. Well, this play starts behind the net. First, Messina takes his man out of the play. It comes back to the right post of Woolery, and it skirts out to that corner, and they're going to send Messina off. I believe it might be for a holding here, Reagan. No, cross check. Wow. So it is from that play that he took his man out of that right corner. I was thinking that whole time, would they let him go on it, but... Clearly not. The last dish effort by Messina forces a penalty. Second power play of the night for Northwood. 0 for 1 on their first attempt, but they, that, they use that power play to swivel the momentum and get their first goal a little later on. They're back to work, though. The Chippewa is able to clear it out. Look out, a shorthanded opportunity, but Beamish couldn't get the puck ahead of the back-checking McCarthy. Northwood will hold with 18 seconds to go in the period. We picked up by Harford across the line with 10 to go. He's to the outside, pressured by Robertson. His centering feed in front. McCarthy couldn't get a handle on it. Another shot from the right wing went wide. McCarthy centering it out in front, blocked and cleared, and that'll do it for period one. Northwood controlled the second half of that period. Caleb Woolery standing strong, sands one shot. It's 2-1. At the end of one, Devin Sarah will have the intermission report when we come back here from Martin Ice Arena.
Devin Sarah with you for the first intermission report presented by CMHIceHockey.com, your one-stop shop for all things CMU. First in that first period, uh, Northwood is out shooting the Chippewas 19 to 12. Uh, what an effort, what an impressive effort by this Timberwolf team that the first 10 minutes were all in CMU's favor. They were dominating the pace of this game. They were controlling the tempo, working out of their own zone. But then Northwood came resiliently back, scoring at the uh, 1735 mark from Colin White, assisted by Todorovic. Uh, that followed up a goals by Andrew Porzondik and Connor Morgan. Morgan scoring in the first minute of this hockey game. And you got the sense that Central had a chance to maybe run away with this thing, maybe uh, work some extra emphasis on it. But uh, they have done everything and much more to uh, lead the way in scoring for this team. Uh, and that results in the score uh, two to one right now for CMU. Right now they are on a penalty kill from a Spencer Messina cross checking. Their Northwood is 0 for 1 currently after a roughing call on Kyle Robertson was killed off. So we sit at a 2-1 uh, tally in favor of the Timberwolves. Let's update you on some scores out of the uh, ACHA top 10. Grand Valley State versus number nine Michigan State. That being a huge one as Michigan State is on the cusp of making their first national tournament in a long time. There I am. Hello, everybody. <laughs> a little miscue right there. We're all good. Am I Am I there? I am there. Hey. Wow, I was talking to Clouds there for a while. Thank you. Uh, Northwood is on, taking the ice right now, so we're going to hurry this deal up. Lawrence Tech is taking on Pitt. Johnstown today, number two in the country. Florida Gulf Coast, number three at number 10, Arkansas. Dartmouth taking on UMass and New England, uh, the third and the fourth. Hope College visits Ferris State. Colby College, number six in the nation, the surprise of this one, versus Thomas College. Air Force versus Colorado uh, Mesa and Missouri at Maryville today. We're going to step aside and get you ready for a second period action with Reagan Cleaves up next on CCHN. back here at Martin Ice Arena. Second period about to get underway. Central Michigan and Northwood with Northwood on the power play for another 114 to start the frame. They've had both power plays in this contest and their first one really turned the tables and turned the flow in their favor at the start of that in the middle of that second period. Now Northwood Back on the prowl, a fumble at the line, but a good keep though by White to regain control. Timberwolves have it. Nifty pass up to Gooley, and now it's gonna be both number nines, Colin Reeder and Will Rapoon to go off. Coincidental minor penalties, 56 seconds into the period. Well, I wanna go back to the end of that, sec that first period with Spencer Messina took his man out of the play which resulted in taking a cross-checking penalty that left it at a five-on-four power play for Northwood, so we'll get some four-on-three, very rare here. Uh, pretty much this game, look, CMU has, I believe, still controlled the tempo in this one. I'm not just saying that biasly. It's been Central's game in the neutral zone. It's been their possession of the puck, but Northwood has found opportunities to create rushes up and down the other way and that resulted in a two-on-one in which Colin White capitalized on. Connor White, excuse me. It's a score it reads, and Northwood finds themselves in this hockey game. Now the play's down to the Northwood end after CMU was able to clear it out. They've got the puck. Porzondek puts it back to his own defensive blue line. 
Battle for it along the half wall. Poisonic works it free. He's going to be offside, though. He's hauled down by Gooley. He isn't going to get a penalty. Oh, that should have been offside as it was Cooper Harfoot who came in just over the line, but Northwood gets away with one there. And it looks like Caleb Orr is having an issue with his pad down in net for Central Michigan. He's been fiddling with it for the past little bit. We know, we know he broke his toe tie in his last start. Now oh, he makes a great right pad save, fresh off the face off, and again looks down at his pad, and it's broken. The toe tie has come completely off Caleb Bullery's left pad with 13 seconds to go in the power play. So Caleb Woolery with a pad issue, he's gonna have to get fixed. And we'll see if the Chippewas want, may, may need to bring in a, another netminder here. Now it's right out in front, loose puck. It's swatted to the line, Bechtel unable to keep it in. And look out, CMU is a two on one. Jace Johnson down the right wing, out in front for Connor Morgan on the deflection, and he put it high. Minute and a half gone in period two. Robertson floats it right back in. Caleb Woolery still fiddling with that toe tie on his left pad. He's looking to the bench, keeping an eye on the play. That's going to be a problem for this young netminder as we go on. Yeah, no indication from Sam Zabelson that putting on his pads, but he is looking at Woolery urgently seeing whether, and, and, and we can't see it on this screen, but I mean, he's looking up and down at that left foot every single time the puck gets cleared out of the red line. And I mean, I know it's a bit of a rare situation, but you could see what Hope pulled in the national tournament last year. They pulled a goalie change on the fly. They switched McLean, Chick, and Ryan McClellan mid-play. So that could happen here, but right now, Woolery seemed to, seems to have left that left pad alone. 17.33 to go in middle frame. Team up 2-1. Northwood cutting the deficit in half, and Connor White, his third of the year. Well, this is a good pressure by Central. They forced that last turnover on Trevor Peacock, and that spun that two-on-one with Morgan and Johnson. Hutton will play that down. Messina, or pardon me, uh, Rapoon and Reeder still in the box until the next stoppage of play. They're off for coincidentals. This is going to be signaled for icing against CMU and the call. So Reeder and Rapoon will be freed from the box. And Caleb Woolery goes back to work on that left let's pad. Switch, let's switch roles here. Goaltender, we obviously know that from you, Reagan. Explain the cow toe, cow hook. Explain kind of yeah, so how the role, yeah. what that role it supports on your lower pad and what that being broken does to you. So basically the toe tie is what keeps the, the toe of the pad connected to the front of your skate that allows you to move it around freely. And right now, it looks like the referee is going to give him some time to work on it. But basically, without that, your pad's going to be flopping around on your on your leg willy-nilly. And basically, you aren't really going to be able to perform the butterfly correctly. So sort of like when you tie a string to like like a boat, for example, basically, right? Th like if you, if you had yeah. a boat not come loose, on the side of a stern, right? Yeah. It's sort of like that where it's just flinging around as far as it, it wants. Yeah, I think of it as like if a, if a skate was loose on a, on a, with a skater. Yeah. Where it, it, it makes the job a lot harder. But right now he gets a little bit of relief. Nathan bottles in on the attack for CMU. Great right inside, by the way. Thank you for that. Right on the half wall. And what we could have we done, we could have had Joel Drucker, former D3 <laughs> netminder, come in and explain uh, that. I'm not Derek. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Just kidding. Old Drucker has four more games left in his career with the D2 team. Started it with the D2 team and will end it with the D2 team. Now look out. Northwood the other way. A nice lofted shot. Woolery is able to come over and make the save. Gobbling it up with 16-12 to go in period two. So obviously the condition of Woolery's pad will be an ongoing story in this game, but the first thing is Central's really batting down the hatches, particularly with the systematic following. They're keeping the puck through the flood, which means they're getting numbers to that puck, which allows them to really make short passes up their wings and as a unit move this puck up and out of their zone the first time. And there's a good example of 
Jake Bishop working against Peacock, who's had a tough start to this period, has lost handle that puck a couple of times, but fortunate comes back. And with all this start and stop, it favors Northwood all the way because Central, when they're able to dictate the flow, they dictate the play of the ice, it's their game. But when it's the start and stop and you force face off, one of our keys, you had to control it. Northwood's been up to the test, especially, and they win another one. And this Northwood faceoff team has been a, doing a really good job. The puck's loose out in front of Woolery, and it's in the net. Ben Haney swats it home after a scramble out in front, and Northwood has tied the game. Well, this all starts on that left wing faceoff win. They get it up to the point where the first man to touch it is Donald Gooley. Works it just on net. It's a simple crash the net, fling it around. And we talked about the, the toe hook of Woolery being loose on that left pad, Reagan, down on the ice and all that traffic in front. No whistle comes. They don't give them the benefit of the doubt. And it's a great play by Haney, who now has goals in back-to-back -back games after scoring his first in the ACHA last week. And the Chippewas were pleading their case to be official. With 4.05 gone. But he was in great positioning. He was able to see the puck the entire time. Chippewas couldn't smother it. And now Northwood has tied the game at 4.05. Now, Northwood once again right back in. Can't get anything done with it. You know, they've really put on the pressure here since their first power play opportunity of the contest. Central Michigan pulled back in their own end. It's lofted out. Peacock will hold it his own line. Northwood goal scored by number four, Ben Haney. Assisted by number 91, Donald Gulu. And number six, Thomas Kroll. Time of the goal, 405. So Haney from Gulu and Kroll. Gulu and Kroll. Time at 4.05. This game is turned on its head. No doubt. And what a job by this Timberwolf team, head coach by Mike Vesna. They haven't gone away. Central, as much credit as he's given them, they're being outshot in this game. Northwood has, for better or for worse, one more faceoff. And oh my, Brendan Schultz, eight on eight on White. Wide rebound, Schultz wasn't able to get to it. That was almost Schultz on Schultz crime. Right. Dumped down the ice by Northwood and Robertson's gonna win the race. And this, this Northwood team has been all the way, dump and chase, try and get the stretch pass, and they've iced it a lot, but Central isn't taking advantage of that up the other way. They're not the ones dictating the flow through the neutral zone. It's allowing Northwood to get set up and simply put, that last time, that's their specialty. It's CMU's specialty. Very similar coaching styles. Get one on that and crash and try and just clog up the middle and take that goaltender down to his pads. Puck behind the net for a Central Michigan faceoff win. They battle for it in the corner. It's eventually pulled free here by French. The wall for Hutton. He'll throw it down, taken by Peacock. Northwood tries to get it out of the zone. And odd Karam off of the face of Zwick, and CMU able to keep the pressure on here. Scaturo, unable to get it out on first attempt, gets it out on the second attempt, and French will dump it in from neutral ice. Messina, behind the net, bouncing puck, worked up the way to Jace Johnson. He's across the line to the outside. Last year's Michigan High School Athletic Association leading scorer. He tore his way through his senior year at Riverview Cabrini. Looks to take a run there at his opposite number, Cic Ciceretto. And Northwood puts this back into the CMUN. This, this second period, and really the Last half of that first period, too, look out, a quick shot from the right half ball turned aside by Woolery. It's been just a weird, funky play from Central Michigan, Devin. They seem to have lost the step they had from the get-go. Look out, a bouncing puck in front of Woolery, and it's taken here by Morgan. We'll just chip it into the offensive end with 12.50 to go. In the second, CMU almost caught in a line change there. A couple of deflections through neutral ice, and Clements will hold. His pass ahead deflected by Ciceretto. Hop has it. 
feeds it right out in front. Bottle's got a deflection on it, and now he's in the corner. Bowerson left point. Long shot through traffic. Skittered wide. Northwood trying to get it out. CMU applying pressure for what seems like the first time in the second period. Bowerson holds it in at the line. He's had a good couple of shifts. And this is ninth game of the year. Clements, his shot blocked, and Northwood might have a two on one. Gooley down the left side with Bowerson back. Gooley in, shot blocker save by Caleb Wooler. He stuck out the right hand and got it up and out of play. A big save on a 2-1-1 one, one there from the freshman. 11.59 to go in the second. Gooley, who just took that last uh, shot attempt from the point assistant on Haney's goal, Reagan, was the one that caused that turnover on Clements. He was able to work this one from the left wing up, and he had help coming down the wing with his man, West, or rather, uh, Gooley. And the big points, or sorry, Westendorf, yeah. And that time, Woolery didn't know whether to cover the strong side or that weak side against Westendorf. And I'll tell you what, he was able to come out and challenge that shot the way he did because of how uh, Kyle Bowerson defended it. He took away the passing lane and was able to let his netminder handle the shot. Yeah, and that blocker saved the confident one, especially with all of the pad troubles he's having with that left pad. And we haven't seen him fiddle with it in a little bit, Devin. You mentioned that pad, but keep an eye on it. Seems to have at least gotten it secured. Top line out there for CMU. Campbell across the line. Nifty toe drag. He's in, but he couldn't get the backhand off. Rapoon up at the left point. Shot blocker to wait. or blocked by Haney. He's had a great period. His second goal of the year has tied this game. And then he blocks that one. Porzondic spins around from the left, from the right side. Ricochets around behind. Campbell rides his man into the boards. Pulls it free, centering it for Robertson. His shot bounces wide. Off the side of the net. Northwood able to get it up to the point. Rapoon, his shot was blocked, but he keeps it in again. Another shot blocked by Todorovic, and it comes back out. Campbell working in. He's the lone top line member out there for CMU. He forces the save by Schultz, and now Robertson is getting into it at the, behind the net with Bechtel. Right. Great shift by Owen Campbell. To Jackson, the junior, told me this morning, Reagan, he wasn't feeling 100%, kind of dealing with some illness-like symptoms, coughing and sneezing, but he, we certainly he told know about me, that. I joked to him, I said, flu game? He said, Michael Jordan? <laughs> so, Campbell's always a character. He got that assist on Porzondek's second goal for the second goal of this hockey game. Which extends his point streak to six, six now. Games. Big time Which is stuff. good, and he, as he surpasses Isaac Gibbs for the team lead. Shot blocked and goes up and out of play. And the draw will stay in the zone. And among all things that Campbell's provided, besides leading the way in scoring, besides getting the point streak, he's been a good defender as well. He's really done a solid job killing stuff, putting out, I like to use the word fires, but that really just means negating scoring chances for the opposition. I think he's really been a well-rounded player, and he's a big reason, part of the three-game win streak because of that. Central Michigan back in the offensive end once again. We've spent the last couple of minutes there. Haven't been able to score once again. Canana puts it in for the Timberwolves. Messina wraps it around the boards. Kept in at the line and thrown around the boards. Hutton trying to get it out. But his signal's crossed with Johnson, who moves it up to Morgan. He throws it in wide. Hutton, left point, causes a turnover. A shot deflected in front. It's blocked to the corner. Another shot and a save by Schultz. And Brennan Schultz right on the doorstep. Jamming away at it, and the crowd gathers. And McCarthy's going to defend his goaltender, but fans are minded. The broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the American Collegiate Hos Hockey Association, the CME Club Hockey Network, and Warhol Television. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the ACHA, CCHN, and MHTV. Draw to the right. Here of Aiden Schultz. Bottles unable to win it as it's free in the left corner. Hop after it into the right wing corner. Up to Clements. 
Works around a man, right circle. Works in, shot, that was deflected wide right along the ice. Quick pursuit by Hutton, by Hop. His shot goes off the side of the net and Nathan Bottles is gonna draw a penalty against Northwood. First power play of the night for CMU and it couldn't come at a better time. Yeah, that's the freshman over there, Luke Ciceretto out of Commerce Township, Michigan, Wald Lake Northern product. Had a chance to watch him a lot in high school. Very dynamic defender, skates real fast, but that time he gets in the left post way of Nathan Bottles. I believe they called it a holy rig. Did you catch it? It was a trip. Trip. So they get his, his, his uh, motion anyway. CMU's first power play of the night. Comes at 10.47 of this second period, about 20 minutes of game time after Robertson's penalty that turned the momentum for Northwood. Nadu working, centers it to Robertson. His shot was blocked and it'll trickle up to the line and out, so Clements will have to regroup here. Orzondek receives the pass from Clements. He's over the line, dropped it back to the point for Campbell. 90 seconds to go in the power play. Nadu chips it up the wall. Campbell in the corner. A walk up the wall. Trade places with Clements. He's able to keep that in. Nifty toe drag to the center, but it was poked away by French as Campbell tried to do too much with that. And that leads to Northwood clearing the zone. A minute and six, Porzonic enters the zone. To the outside, centering in front for Jace Johnson, any fan of the one-timer, and Northwood clears. And for Jace, I know he's gonna be frustrated about that. He's had a couple of games in his first couple starts where he's really just fanned on shots like that one. And that was his bread and butter in high school, part of the reason he was the leading scorer. You know, we, we talked about breaking that drought, getting the go-ahead game-winning goal against Oakland. Great one it was, but boy, he's gonna be kicking himself for that. Lentz will hold back in his own end with 30 seconds to go on this first CMU power play. Chase Johnson dips needling over the logo at center ice, got tied up with Canetta, and Clements gets upended at center ice by McCarthy. <laughs> you think that's a message by McCarthy? I certainly think it is. Chase Johnson pulls it free, centering it out in front, deflected away. Robertson in the right corner. Seven seconds to go on the power play. Whole spin around, pressured there by Ciceretto. Power play is over. CMU still has control though. Morgan, flubbed the pass, pulls it off the boards though. Chips it down into the corner. McCarthy behind the net to pick it up. Chase Johnson in front for Morgan. He fanned on the shot. It's cleared once again by the Timberwolves into the corner. Hutton down the wall to Chase Johnson. Power play is over by now, but CMU still buzzing in the offensive end. Messina out in front, Morgan off the side of the net, couldn't get a handle on it, Gooley cleared it out to neutral ice, and Northwood will finally be able to get a change. Chippewas though look to move right back in, that's the best zone time we've seen CMU have all second period, Devin. Bishop centering it in front, Julian Johnson couldn't control it, and Ben Haney is up left wing. He has the game tying goal, Earlier in the second period, Gooley forcing the issue behind the net. Haney now has it. Dropped it off for Gooley. Haney getting worked over here by Andrew Miller. Gooley, though, picked up the loose change. Dances around in the slot. Multiple Chippewas converge, and it's Julian Johnson to come away with the puck. He moves it up to Messina, who flipped it in. Haney at center ice, picks up the loose puck, overstated it, though. Reeder in after it. Working into the circle, a shot fed it out in front. But nobody was on the back door for the Timberwolves. Nobody but Messina. And if he's not there, I'm sure there's somebody ready to just capitalize on the weak side. What a shift that was just two minutes ago, Reagan. Central off the power play, kept the zone time on, good pressure along the walls. I like to use the word matter of time, but it really is right now. Julian Johnson. Walking up right wing, dumped it in, ends up going into the CMU bench. With 5.20 to go in the period, stay with us for intermission number two. I'll have that for you, and hopefully we'll get the camera on me this time. It, was, it ended up being my mistake in the first intermission anyway. So. Hey, you're humble enough to admit that. We're making progress. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Love you too, man. 
Five twenty to go. I'm not. I'm not putting. Sam, I'm not putting Sam on blast. No. I could, but Sam's done a great job. Our producer tonight, Sam Tomachinski. Our only staff member, other than Devin and I, here at Martin tonight. What's his last name, Devin? I'm not saying it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Sam Tabachinski, everybody. Did a great job. That's what I said. You did? That's what I okay. said. Okay. Bottles I trying to start things for CMU with five oh. minutes to go. We got a hockey game going on, right? We got to focus. And it's a good one, too. Something that we haven't seen in this rivalry for quite some time. The last game that was under three goals was back on February 8th. It was a 4-1 CMU win. Everything else since then has been blowout fashion for the maroon and gold. And it certainly doesn't look like that's gonna be the way we go tonight. Icing called against CMU here. Well, if I had a highlight package, I would explicitly put it through new, uh, Timberwolves' neutral zone presence. A lot of these wing attacks coming up left wing, right wing, carried by the forwards. They're a dump and chase kind of offense. They work to the corners, but they're really good in that area. They force the flood to come out to the center zone where it allows scoring chances, and they put one on Woolery. No one ready on the back door. But they've been a really consistent team. And in that regard, and among the mistakes, sometimes turning the puck over, young teams do that. They found a groove, and they're matching the intensity that Central's brought. They do. Picked up a loose puck. He's into the left. Circle in with a shot off the mask of Schultz. The rebound score! Jay Nadu from behind the goal line. It's 3-2. This is all Jay Nadu first. Forces a turnover the blue line. Takes a shot on the strong side. And Schultz picks it up. He's got the save, but he does not smother it. Nobody clears it. And Nadu gets the fortunate bounce. And he picks that one up. That's a, that's a wonderful goal by a player that has struggled to find the bounces this year. His fifth of the season. And gives the Chippewas back the lead. But they've got to defend it now. Northwood trying to get up the line. Gooley centering it out in front. It kind of rolled through the middle of the slot, but no Northwood Timberwolves were there to play it. Over the line. They've got it. Gooley working in and he scores! We've got a tie game once again, less than a minute after CMU takes the lead. So once again, you get this one out of the neutral zone. I said it before, working at cross ice feeds. They work the flood to the left side. Gooley sticks with this bouncing puck, finds it in a soft spot, and it skirts past the far side of Woolley this time. His left pad, what's been the story? Can he get that leg across? And it barely skirts by. Wow, I mean, that's impressive. The fact that Northwood could answer that quickly. I mean, this, this doesn't look like a young team. This looks like a team that knows what they're capable and playing confident on those bounces. CMU trying to regain that mojo. They got it with that power play and that goal, but Northwood just as quickly takes it away. Now Jace Johnson comes up over the line, trying to get that lead back for CMU. His shot goes off the side of the net and up and out of play here with 3.17 to go in the second. I'll tell you what, some players that have had themselves a heck of the game. Donald Gooley, number 91, had an assist on that Benjamin Haney goal earlier from the point. Donald Gooley, assisted by number six, Thomas Kroll. Time of the goal, 16-20, second period. Goal scored by number 91, Gooley. Kroll gets the assist. That's three assists on all three of Northwood's goals for Kroll, Reagan. Thomas Kroll out of Midland, Michigan. He continues what has been a great season. Eight goals, eight, eight, eight assists this season, now up to 12 as we have a scuffle at, after the end of the play. Yeah, that clap bomb right at slot area. That's that's a stand-up play for Woolery, who, boy, I, this has not been what we expected from him coming off three straight wins. He's played good, he's played solid, but there are some of these that have skirted by, particularly that Second goal where they answered back quickly where you're sitting there going, 
And I got to support. And I got to yeah. think that that shot by Gooley was a changeup or something where he didn't get a lot on it, and either Woolery got a piece of it with his pad, and or it just came weird off his stick because it didn't look like a clean shot that went through. It no, kind of trickled over the goal line. I mean, it was one of those that where you, you kind of lose handle of it and it just flutters in, sort of like if you lose handle over a blue line, but it, instead it goes past this far side. Just, just a wacky game, too. Let's acknowledge that. There's been a lot of, of course, it's Martin Ice Arena, wacky bounces, but. I mean, credit to this Northwood team. It's, this is a Central Michigan team that they haven't beaten since 2016. This is their first season back since that COVID year where they got outscored 28 to four in this series. So credit to Northwood. They are not hanging their head. They're staying in this game, playing some good hockey. Speaking of which, a great shot there from Hartford on the left side. And Woolery is able to glove it down easily, but still making the young netminder do some work. 2.02 to go in the period. The underrated part that just happened, Ethan Westenborg going up, kind of checking in the face of Hutton. You know, him along with Zachary McCarthy have been really physical guys for them. They've been chippy in the plays, after the plays. They've, they've matched physically. We haven't said that a lot tonight, how physical this game's gotten and I'm particularly Northwood. I thought CMU would be the bigger team, but yeah, like we've said, you can't give enough credit to these young guys. I mean, how much of that comes down to coaching, Devin, with Jordan Cooper, a former D3 Chippewa, spent spent a good chunk of time here, including a couple of national tournament runs. How how do you think he how, do you think he prepared his team for this? I mean, a lot of our conversation was, hey, you've got some talent with some young high school guys that really just haven't seen the speed, the experience, but. His style of play, from what we remember, was always the physical. It was not just the physical, just to say it. It's following up the finish checks. It's keeping your corners stout and not drifting away from the play. And that's something they've done a lot tonight. I think of a guy, particularly Zachary McCarthy out of Chesterfield. I mean, he's got the puck right now. Sticks in there with Owen Campbell. And yeah, a lot of our conversation was that. You may not be the most skilled, but you can sure, sure match the intensity. That's all effort. Campbell on some good forecheck check pressure, getting another Central Michigan shot. Bowerson has to hold up because Campbell went off for a change and didn't tag up. So he lets to just dump it in. 45 seconds to go. Chase Johnson has it in the right wing corner. Worked it up top to Rapoon. He's got it center point. Left wall for Bowerson. His shot deflected on its way to the goal. And Schultz was able to make the save. This will roll down the ice and Woolery will come out to play it and negate the icing. 29 seconds to go. Rapoon. Harassed from behind there by White. Jace Johnson comes out with it. He had a three-point night the other night against Illinois State, but he lost the puck, and now a pass ahead. White splits the defense. He works in on Woolery. A save by the freshman netminder with Rapoon not really allowing White to get a shot off. Seven seconds to go. McCarthy dumps it into the offensive end for Northwood. Chippewas will send it across the way, and a penalty coming up on the Timberwolves as we go to the third period. So CMU. Right here, Reagan. Yep, cross check. So a big White. turn of events, Devin, at the end of that third period. A big save by Woolery on a breakaway by White. And then the Timberwolves are going to head to the penalty box at the start of this third period. We'll recap the second period when we come back for the second intermission report here on CCHN 3 3. Your score after 40.
Well, we are deadlocked at three here at Martin Ice Arena in the final game in this building of the Battle of M20. It was Northwood going up to the M1 next year. And it's been a fun one here tonight. 3-3 three, three the score after 40 minutes. We entered CMU up by one at two to one. Things went, did not go well for CMU to start that second period as Northwood carried some momentum. They started the period on a power play and they would eventually get a goal at 4.05. Haney out of a goal mouth scramble gets a second of the year in his second in back-to-back -back games to uh, bring his team even, and that's uh, that, that's what made it 2-2. CMU uh, argued with the officials about it, thought that it may have been covered, but the referee was on top of it. He was able to see it the entire time before Haney uh, jammed it into the back of the net and made it a 2-2 hockey game. CMU, though, about 10 minutes later, would, seem, would get the momentum back. They, uh, off of a power play about halfway through that period, they start to get some momentum and they eventually capitalized on it. Not on the power play, but at 15.52, Jay Nadeau with his second point of the night. Oh, pardon me, his first, yeah, second point of the night, that top line again factoring in on what has been a great second semester for that line of Nadeau, Campbell, and Porzondic. All three of them getting uh, points on that tally. That would put CMU up, but it would not last. About 40 seconds later, but pardon me, 30 seconds later, they would get uh, Northwood would strike back. Gooley down the left side. His shot handcuffed Caleb Woolery a little bit. Goes off him. Trickles over the goal line and into the net for the game tying goal. Three apiece. And that's where we stand at the end of 40 minutes. Power plays in that period. CMU with their uh, lone power play of the night coming in that second period. They are 0 for 1 in their one opportunity. Northwood did not get any opportunities in that second period. They remain 0 for 2, but the big storyline, CMU coming out of this second intermission with a full two minute power play uh, that they got from a cross checking penalty right at the buzzer. So CMU has the opportunity to come out of the break with some gusto and maybe uh, turn the momentum once again in their favor. So shots on goal after 20 minutes, Northwood has the edge. Uh, 29 to 22, though both teams split 10-10 shots in that second period. So a very even game here at Martin Ice Arena, and now we take a look at some out-of-town schoolboys. The Grand Rapids Griff Griffins uh, right now at the end of one period, up on the Rockford Ice Hogs, 1-0. Uh, you can listen to that game on Wood Radio 1300, 106.9 FM, as Bob Kayser has the call from the Big Orange Box in Rockford, Illinois. Uh, the Saginaw Spirit take on the Barry Colts tomorrow, Saturday, 7 p.m. Puck drop. You can listen to that game. Dylan Clark will have the call for you at 100.5 WSGW. And you can also watch that one on CHL TV. Detroit Red Wings, obviously, in the All-Star break. Uh, so uh, the All-Star game will happen tomorrow, I believe, around 7 p.m. But the uh, Wings will return to action as the team February 10th when they host Vancouver. And that game will be on 97 won the ticket. So 3-3, three, three, the score after 40 minutes. 20 minutes to decide who wins the first battle of M20 since, uh, since March 6th, 2021. Stay with us. It's sure to be a good one here on CCHN.
40 minutes down, 20 to go in regulation as the Central Michigan Chippewas and Northwood Timberwolves coming together for the first time since March of 2021 find themselves deadlocked at three as we start this third period with CMU Devon on the power play, which could be massive. This is massive. This is right now the turning point for them. They had a rough second period, which they allowed Northwood to answer efficiently, physically, and quickly. This is a period you have to answer. Brennan Martin, unsurprisingly, I wouldn't be very happy with that effort. This is Central's time to take control of this game. They've had opportunities in this one. They should be the benefactory team. They've let Northwood hang around. They've scored a tie hockey game. Caleb Woolery forced to make a stop and hold on for a whistle on the power play. It's not the way you want. It's not the way he wanted to start. Well, the draw to his left here. No, but you get your top power play unit that you've wanted all year. Nadu Porzondik and Campbell. The question is, how do they work together? I've seen a lot of kind of solo chances up the ice, particularly Campbell. Got to work as a unit here. And they can't get the puck out as Porzondik's clearing attempt was not the way. They're going to ice the puck with 1.22 to go, but it was waved off at the last second. So CMU catching a break there, and they now have the puck on the power play. Clements, right point. Cross, Robertson tees it up and fires a shot. Blocker, Campbell from a sharp angle, and the net comes off its moorings. Schultz sliding over, knocks the, knocks the net off, and Northwood will not be able to change here with 1.04 to go on the power play. Now, and Campbell is ready to tee that up as Schultz was looking on that strong side from the initial shot. I think he was at a too sharp of an angle to try that. He thinks about just walks up on that one tee, and, doesn't really go anywhere as Schultz got across. CMU though, controls off the face zone. Messina holds it up top, deflecting the shot, looking for a deflection. Jace Johnson couldn't get a handle on it. Bottles, top of the right circle, in shot, blocked by Beamish. He spins around, saved by Schultz. The rebound is cleared to the slot. Messina will have to go and collect at the left point. He keeps it in though. Morgan to Johnson. Behind the net, meandering to the right corner. Worked it up the wall for Messina. Holds the line, down to Bottles. Into the slot, works it with the wrist shot, saved by Schultz, rebound, Bottles tries on the second attempt and it just flutters right on Schultz. Full hold with 23 seconds to go in the Chippewa power play. Beamish is the one working down low off the initial shots, trying to lift it, doesn't do it high enough as Schultz has him in his grip, chest protector up does not fall to the ice. And you know, that's a little bit of composure in front of the net. I like the attempt, but Schultz has stood tall. 20 seconds to go in the man advantage. Beamish up the wall to Messina right point. Shot through traffic, deflected off of two Timberwolves. Right back to Morgan. Messina, center point. Across for Johnson, left circle, shot blocked. It's loose in the circle and it's cleared. And a good effort there by McCarthy. Two minutes gone in this third period. Power play over, CMU 0 for 2 on the night. What a period it's been, what a game it's been for McCarthy. He's probably been the MVP of this Northwood team right now, among others, for Chippewa stuff like that. You know, the Chippewa forecheck in full gear. Vasilovic, haven't heard, hit, heard a ton out of him tonight. Putting some pressure on. Johnson got it tangled up in his skates and now it's moved down, Harfoot. Line the pressure, pass ahead for Andrew Miller. Steps over the line, a shot handcuffed Schultz, and it goes into the corner. Miller, still in pursuit. Rapoon to Robertson, through traffic, and Schultz with Vasilovich right out in front of him. is able to find the puck, gobble it up for a whistle. That fourth line, I mean, they're doing work. You see Miller taking it himself, and. That's a shot where he is trying to get that save, that kick out to the corner and start it up. Exactly like they want from left to right, the cycle. Really strong effort by that fourth line and allows that top line chance for the faceoff. Off the faceoff, Northwood clears it to the line. They're able to chip it out on second attempt and Robertson will have to come back to his own blue line, pressured by two Timberwolves. Corsanda 
up the wall, intended for Campbell, but intercepted by Gooley. Pass ahead, Haney tipped it into the offensive end. Robertson chasing after it with Kroll. They go behind the net, Haney, who tied the game at two, back in that second period. Teamwork got it out for Central Michigan, though. Jay Nadu, he's got Amanda beating Cicerato. Nadu to the front of the net, penalty coming up. Jay Nadu draws the penalty from McCarthy, pardon me, Cicerato, and it's gonna be a trip, so CMU back to the power play with 16.32 to go in regulation. Boy, Nadu with the speed inside. When you have the ability to outpace a young defender like this, it allows you to get inside, and Cicerato saves this play. If he doesn't trip up Nadu, he might have a one-on-one -on -one and lift it over Schultz. Second tripping call on Cicerato tonight. It's been tough for him, but it's a great job by Nadu utilizing the speed and what a spring along it was by Campbell to start that up. Three consecutive power play opportunities for CMU. They are 0 for 2 on their previous man advantages. Bottles up to Messina, center point. Works around a defense shot, goes wide off the side of the net. Jay Johnson fed it out front. Beamish jams away at it, and Schultz holds on. 14 seconds gone in the power play. And that's a duo that's connected a lot of times. Johnson along the wall, has that speed, has that skill to get it in front. And Beamish is the crasher. Schultz is every single time stood up with pressure in his face. That's a tough task for Netminer. Offensive zone draw one by CMU. Bouncing puck controlled by the Timberwolves and they dump it down the ice. Look out to Todorovic. Bumped that puck down the ice. He was off for the races, but Woolery able to get to it. Messina, miscommunication with Jace Johnson. Forces the Chippewas to regroup at their own defensive blue line. 122 to go in the power play. Bottles across the line, working in, gets hooked. His shot was turned aside softly by the right pad of Schultz. Bottles has it. Slides it across Morgan left point. We'll walk the line, trade places with Bottles. Bottles centering it for Messina, and the circle is shot, scores! Spencer Messina, his first of the year, and first is a D3 Chippewa, it's 4-3. This goal is such an appreciative effort by Bottles, who takes all of the attention away from Messina. Works on that left side. Everybody thinks Bottles is gonna shoot this. Everybody thinks he's gonna take the strong side, look for a rebound and crash, but he goes across the way. Messina is the open man taking all that attention and floats it under the blocker side of Schultz. That's a credit, that's an unselfish play by Nathan Bottles who could shoot that himself and force another crash and scramble in front, but he finds the open man and Messina's rewarded for but rewarded for it. How about that for the captain? Assistant captain. That's a power play tally for CMU. One man advantage since the break has been very solid for this Chippewa team. Central Michigan goal. His first of the season scored by number 24, Spencer Messina. Assisted by number 27, Nathan Bottles. Time of the goal, fourth, fourth 27, third period. So as you hear the announcement, Messina, his Time first of the campaign. I think CMU up here. Now Schultz is forced to smother this one with Robertson right on the doorstep. And this power play for Central Michigan, Devin. Now one for three tonight. And that's power play goals in back-to-back -back games for the first time since December 2nd and December 8th. Both massive losses in which they managed to get power play tallies. Yeah, and we said in the first power play how big that would turn the tide of this game. And I think it has, that last one, but CMU now They've let Northwood come back in this more times than not. It's going to be iced. More times than not, they've allowed a breakout. They've allowed an odd man rush to the way. They've created traffic for Woolery, and it has caused problems. And so now your job is, do you keep your consistency and composure? Do you hustle to the puck first? Do you keep Northwood away from establishing a cycle and force them to dump it like they were in that first period? Because if so, that's the formula of success. 
JMU trying to get out of their zone here. Peacock slapped it down the wall. It hit one of his own men, and Bowerson's able to move it out. Bishop in with Miller. Oh, that could have been offside, but Wands get the benefit of the doubt. Now a nifty feed ahead. Gooley over the line. Top of the right circle, centers it out in front. A shot that goes off the back of the end boards and caromed out the other side. Woolery lucky a Timberwolf wasn't on the back on the back door. Haney. Behind the net, Bowerson pins the puck up. Look out, a clearing attempt goes off of the side of the net. Timberwolves maintain control. A shot that's blocked goes up and out of play. The referee's able to stop, able to see it and stop play. You no, know, Devin, last time, CMU went up by one. 28 seconds later, Northwood ties it up. CMU is able to survive 28 seconds here. What if, uh, but you gotta hope they're able to buckle down and hold on. I mean, that is the name of it right now, is holding on. That last time was a good possession, getting the switches. And they turn it over to, to Dorovich. His shot off the side of the net popped up in the air. Woolery at the side of the net. Able to keep that puck out. Schultz up the left wing, mishandled it, and Kroll slaps it back in. That was momentarily off its moorings. Referee came in and reset it. 13 minutes to go in period three. A deflection out in front. It goes just to the left of the net. A great opportunity there for Northwood. And now CMU comes the other way. Johnson up the right wing to the outside, working in on the net. By the head, he scores! Chase Johnson, how do you do? 5-3! Incredible. It's simply incredible. Jace Johnson has been really, we talked the story, snake bit those first six games, broke out against Oakland. And this move he's tried many times over and failed, except this one. Up right wing, has Schultz on the other side. He outpaces the defender, cuts inside the positioning, and there's nothing Schultz can do. He has to play the left side. He has to play Johnson straight up and he dipsy doodles, as you would say, around his pad, and that wide that wide angle, that right skate's open. Chase Johnson, how do you do? What now a goal. Out. Schultz flipped the puck, hop out in front, and the Timberwolves clear it. Another dangerous chance for the Chippewas. Now they got a chance out in front, and Beamish puts it wide. Chippewas have used that power play at the beginning of this period to gain momentum, and now look out. A turnover down the right wing. It's Westendorf to the outside. Button hooks at the half wall. His shot blocked by Mimish, kept him at the line though. Central Michigan goal. Front. His second now bottles. Scored. Working out. Jace the right wing. He lets a shot go. Schultz a little bit off his line. Able to deflect that puck into the corner. Johnson with the unassisted tally. His second of the campaign. Now he has four points in the last two games. Now to the back door, Nadu puts it home. 6-3, and that top line does it again. Well, it's a simple concept. You play this one in the low area, right side. The flood cooks out, and Northwood is playing the puck on that right side all along. It leaves a wide open man along the way to finish it off at Nadu. And Owen Campbell, what a job. I mean, to get in front there, to put it past on the left side of the ice. Wow, Central, that is taking control of a game. That is establishing a four check, and they've done it. Three goals, Reagan, in what, seven minutes? Three goals in four minutes. Huh. And now Campbell, I'm I believe. A, I'm not an expert in timekeeping, but that's pretty good. Well, that's two goals in a mitten five. But Campbell is now going to go off for a cross check. After taking a man down behind the net. So at 8.15, well, they didn't start the clock. Good save by Woolery. His team is able to bail him out to clear it down the ice. 
First Northwood power play since the 1914 mark of the first. Arrow for two. Kroll up the left wing. The shot that's blocked off the side of the net. Robertson is able to clear it in the corner. And they dump it down the ice. So Campbell and Nadu have factored in on three separate CNU goals. Northwood, though, still on the power play for another 110. Worked up top Gooley. On the wall, a shot. Oh, they were looking on the back door for a wide open man, but they couldn't connect. Kanetta now look out, out in front. Woolery makes the save, and we're going to have some words exchanged in front of the net. Yeah, and you know, this is where a CMU team that <laughs> you just mentioned it, a top group able to bring a four check. I mean, it starts off with Nathan Bottles being patient on a power play, finding a man that is not expected. Then you get into Jay Shots, an individual effort. Then you take the flood away from Northwood and you complete a simple cycle. And I mean, look, Northwood, credit to them, has hung around this game as long as they can. But this is where Central now is, they put it together. Brendan Martin, credit to him, the head coach. And Tyler Cosby runs that forward line. They've they found that forward check and they found it in different ways. And I just want to. I just want to highlight how well this top line has gelled for CMU, Devin. Andrew Porzonic, Owen Campbell, and Jay Nadu. They have been monstrous contributors in the last three games for CMU. And it seems like they're factoring in on every single tally. Northwood on the power play for another 22 seconds, though. That top line not out there for CMU in its entirety with Jay Nadu, the only member. He is able to get it out of the zone and that'll kill off most of the rest of the time in this Owen Campbell penalty. Up through center right, Todorovic to the outside. Pressured by Clements. Todorovic turns on that speed. It's been so important to this Timberwolf team this season. Messina lays the body behind the net. A nifty centering feed intended for Todorovic between the legs from Brem doesn't connect. And the puck behind the net. Cleared out by Porzondik before it's rifled right back in by Cicerato. 9.18 to go in regulation. CMU has opened up a three goal lead with goals in this third period. Campbell across that line, out of the box. Let's a shot go. Blockered away by Schultz. The rebound trying to be cleared out, and it is done so by Westendorf. Westendorf pulls up at the right point. After entering, entering the zone and rims it around the boards. In the corner, Bishop lifts it ahead to Campbell. Well, just lofted on goal. Bishop trying to find the carom off the end boards, but he can't do so. It's played out. Zwick trying to work through three CMU defenders, can't do so. But his teammate, Inskatura, will move it in. He's worked over by the Oh, we're going to oh, look out. A centering feed went off from Poon and almost into the back of the net. I think Woolery got a left pad on it. Oh, this pad in the right place at the right time. And now Rapoon had his stick being held by Kanena for about four or five seconds. I remember earlier, the Hutton had one off his rear end. Almost go in. Yeah. Looks almost identical. That one off the shin that time. For the final time tonight, if you're looking for game reports, stats, schedules, and more, take a trip to CMHIceHockey.com. There you can find those and much more, including player information, recruiting information, apparel, and more. That's C-M-I-C-H-I-C-E-H-O-C-K-E-Y.com. You know, Devin, at some point we're going to rewrite those ad reads, and it'll probably be after you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> it has to. It has to. I'm not the guy in charge of that. You're master of PR. I just, I just operate this thing. I point and click, and you tell me what to write. Problem is, I I can say them fast enough. You know, I talk a lot faster than most other people. Well, me too. But you know, it's not the it's not the the pace of the race that wins. You know, the tortoise and the hare. Yeah. No hare. No no tortoises there. And CMU is able to win the race for the icing. Uh, it's been fun. Um, and you know what? This game has been fun to watch, despite the mistakes CMU's had. 
the resilience Brendan Martin and his group has shown. And credit to, on the other side of things, Mike Vesna, Jordan Cooper, and his return. This Northwood team is impressed. I'm excited for what tomorrow's game will. It's still a lot of time left, though. 6-3, and Northwood is, they're desperately trying to find offense quick. A good save there by Schultz to pad that one away. Jace Johnson plays it to the corner. Big hit laid by Colin Reeder. Clements kept it in at the line. He's harassed there by Gooley, and Clements still able to maintain control of the punt. Into the offensive circle. Bouncing puck at the side of the net, worked away from Clements. And a pass ahead to Haney, just too far for him. He's in a race for it with Bowers and Haney, trying to chop that out in front for Gooley. He was uncovered for a moment, but Clements came back and negated that threat. Now Johnson to the outside. It's Jace. Oh, what a big hip check there on, by Ciceretto. Upends Jace Johnson, and he is hurt in the corner on a monstrous hit by Ciceretto. That's actually Zachary McCarty, Reagan, who's been an enforcer all night. Oh, my. That was a clean hip check behind the net. Does and it's, it's Johnson was trying to outpace his man wide. It's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate to see wow. Johnson go down like that, but nothing, nothing malicious. It's a clean hip check. A monstrous one at that. Yeah, he's going to feel that. And, you know, as talented as Jace Johnson is, and no discredit to him at all. He's trying to make something happen wide. That's a great hit by McCarty there. He's been an enforcer. He's been physical all night. Can't take that away from him. He took the play away. It's good to see Johnson get up, though. So he has resumed. It is good to see Johnson get to the bench under his own power. As right now, an insurance goal. Hop working in, ring it off the pipe. It's loose in the crease, and it's cleared to the corner. Isaac Hop. Himself looking for what would have been his first goal of the year. Beamish had his shot blockered to the far half wall. Isaac Hopp in there for Beamish. Two on two as they battle for the puck along the half wall. 6.30 to go in regulation. Look out, Beamish caused a turnover and bottles lifted it high over the goal. Hutton drove his man off the puck, but it's Todorovic who gets stripped of the puck before Beamer sends it into the beams above the ice. 6-10 to go in period three. My, what a third period this has been for CMU, Devin. <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been a resounding bounce back. It was Northwood in the second who evened the shots up, and every time Central would score, Gooley would answer, Benjamin Haney a second straight goal. But Bottles and Messina connecting. Johnson had a great move. And Owen Campbell doing what he did. And that top unit, as you've given so much credit to, so they got to finish it here. But you know, what a win this would be against the Northwood team that was ready to play and still is ready to play as we just saw a minute ago. Nadu getting into it with Colin Reeder in the corner. Nothing comes of it other than a couple of shoves. The Timberwolves come up ice. Miscommunication of the offensive line, though, and Wilma Poon will hold back behind his own net. He'll play it up the left wing to Porzondic. Can't get it out, though, as Reeder kept it in. Westendorf played it in front. Karam and Campbell's able to get it out to Porzondic. Over the line, lost the puck. And Bechtel will play it to center ice. At the Martin Ice Arena logo, Rapoon will sail it in. 5.13 to go. Regulation, came into this period tied. Three goals by the Maroon and Gold. In the span of three minutes, have them up by three. Robertson sends it in. Schultz gloved it at the side of the net and left it for his defensive partner. Clements laid it off the wall. Hammered his man into the corner and he's gonna get a penalty. Interference on Clement. As you hear the referee saying 51 white, 51 white. 440 to go in period three. Well, our impact players recap, Owen Campbell riding his five game point streak continues that tonight with a goal and then some. Assisted on Porzondic's second goal of the night was also 
uh, involved in the goal on Nadu's part that made it three to two. So he's going to be one to watch in our Impact players on the post game show coming up at the conclusion of this one with myself and Reagan Cleves. There's a shot right off the face off by Gooley. It was blocked at a great keep at the point. Work it down to Kroll. Gooley, center point. Left circle for White. Pokes away at it, and Schultz will intercept and send it the length of the ice. 25 seconds gone on the power play. This is an important power penalty kill for CMU. Good turnover there by Schultz. Gets taken down, though, by his opposite number, White. That allows the Timberwolves to maintain possession here. White, trying to get it out through neutral ice, puts the clearing attempt off of Morgan's skate. This Northwood power play hasn't been able to get anything done. Kroll drops it for Gooley. Down the wall. Kroll's got it. Up the wall. Turns and throws it deep. Rapoon. Accepts the check, got it up the wall, not out. Panetta has it in the right circle. Throwing it out in front, intended for Kroll, missed him. And now Morgan causes a turnover. It's a 2-1-1 shorthanded. Morgan feeds it across for Schultz, and his one-timer went wide. He didn't get a ton on it. If he just accepts that puck cleanly, he's got a good shot. Now Gooley the other way. 34 seconds to go in the Clements penalty. Three minutes to go. In regulation. Puck's free behind the net. Haney's got it. Trying to spark something for Northwood. It's in the slot. A shot up and out of play. Might have gotten a piece of Caleb Woolery, but a great opportunity. Wide open in the slot there for Thomas Bechtel. And you know, a guy that was involved in that one. We haven't said his name as much as I would have thought, although he has two assists. And Tudorovic, buddy in the slot. What a team effort for this Northwood team. They've gotten a lot of guys you wouldn't expect involved. McCarthy to Bechtel. Bechtel was stripped of the puck, and here comes Nathan Bottles. Up the wing with Fedorovic. To the outside, a shot could save there by Schultz. It was former D3 on former D3 player with Fedorovic. Now he's right back up by a shot. Oh, that might have taken a deflection off of Bowerson. But Woodery able to find it and snag it for a whistle with 2.30 to go. And that, that's an exclamation point. Confidence saved by Woolery. You said he was shaky a bit in that early second with his pad troubles, that right pad and the cow strap, you know, coming loose. Might have had to finagle something, use a pair of scissors, but you know, he's gotten confident in that third and hasn't allowed a goal since. Credit to the CMU team again, just answering from all the mistakes they had in this one and taking control. Orzondek down the right wing, centering it out in front for Nadu and Smothered there by Schultz. This top line has been nothing short of spectacular in the last four games. Ahead on the schedule, both these teams will be back in action tomorrow. 2.30 puck drop. And with the finale of the battle of M20. Right now, this score holds. It'll be Central Michigan's 13th straight win in this rivalry series. Look to finish off the series with a good note tomorrow at Midland Civic Arena. Shot saved by Woodard. He's able to make a second effort save. Laying down that right pad and holding on with 1.51 to go in the third. They can hold on four straight on the year. Now they killed off that last penalty, kept Northwood 0 for 4 on the night. They've been really good shorthanded, really hounding in the corners, springing breakouts. They've had, in two different penalty kills, odd man rushes. That last one they did with Morgan and Schultz, who ran on that one timer. I'm sure he's gonna get chirped for that, but uh, if they hold on, Reagan, it'd be the third straight game without allowing a power play goal, the longest stretch this season. Westendorf and Rapoon got a little bit into it in the corner, nothing comes of it. Looks like Rapoon's stick got caught up in Westendorf. 95 seconds to go in this one. CMU had a two goal lead erased in that second period, in the first and second period, but it bounced back after allowing the game tying goal. Opened up a three goal lead. This team doesn't, off, doesn't play well from behind. They don't have a win 
in fact, coming from behind all season. When they're tied after two periods, they are 2-0. and It looks like it's gonna move to 3-0 and here this evening. Schultz will let that go at the coercion of the official. And we play on in the final minute. Up the wing, Northwood into the zone. Pressured by Messina. The Hounds Hayden French to the boards. They battle for it. Connor White trying to work it free. 35 seconds to go in period three. Chase Johnson, good to see him back out on the ice after taking that massive hip check. Loose puck right out in front of Wooler. He's able to fight it and it bounces over him and into the net. Connor White with a garbage time goal. Northwood is still alive with 23 seconds to go. And this one funnels in left side of the post, left side of the half wall and funnels from behind the net in front, a mad scramble crash. And that was a CMU defender in front trying to whack it out of midair and clear it. And none of CMU picked it up. And that results in the goal, his second of the night for White. And what a job by this Northwood team. Just to finish that, and they're not gonna win this game, Reagan, unless something dramatic really happens here, but they answered tonight four goals against a CMU team that came out flying in the third. So Beeman, a big hit from behind, and that's gonna draw a penalty on Northwood. It's not gonna mean anything, but it is gonna go down on the score sheet. As time expires, CMU battles back from some adversity, and they have won their fourth consecutive game on home ice with the score of 6-4 of M20, they knock off the Northwood Timberwolves 6-4. We'll step aside. Post game show coming up presented by Optimex Sports. We'll recap this one and look ahead on the schedule for tomorrow here on CCHN.
Back here inside Martin Ice Arena, Reagan Cleves, alongside Devin Sarah, here for the postgame show presented by Optimex Sports, a victorious postgame show. Final ever meeting between these two teams at the D3 level at least and here at Martin Ice Arena and CMU comes out with a victory 6-4 your final here tonight and it started things started so well for CMU in that one Devin and things kind of got away from them but, but they held their heads up and kept going and came out with a strong third period yeah Connor Morgan set the tone goal in the first minute of this hockey game sprung up by Robertson and Schultz, and he did a great job stuffing it on the weak side. You know, we thought early on the goaltender Schultz was going to be a little rocky, and he was after seeing me rattled off two goals in the first three minutes of this one. Poor Zana getting that. But Northwood hung tough, and they answered late in that one from Colin White, who ended up having two goals in this one. And from there on, the end of that first period, boy, Northwood made it a game. Yeah, indeed, and Northwood did make it again. Let's take you through goal by goal here. As Devin said, CMU opened up a two-goal lead in the first three minutes and 42 seconds. Connor Morgan a minute in for uh, his first of the game, and then poor Zondik at 3.42, getting CMU that 2-0 lead. Northwood would cut it in half at seven at 17.08, though, when White let a shot go from the top of the left circle that seemed like... Uh, would have been an easy save for Woolery, but he misreads it, and it goes over his shoulder and in. Yeah, the big story in that second was the pad issues he was having. It seemed like he was irritated with his left lower pad, something to do with what you would describe his, as a cow tail, yeah, correct? His, his toe tie had his come toe off tie, yeah. on his pad, and it, 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 it certainly didn't hamper his it hampered his play, but it didn't lead to anything directly. So that, that was at least well, a high note you could take out the, of that. The interesting part was there was a mad scramble goal in front that Northwood got, and every fan in this building that was in support of CMU thought there should have been a whistle but the refs let him play on it was a good play we thought at that point boy is Wooler going to have to come out for this pad trouble yeah. he ended up not Northwood though was able to tie this game back up for on some quick goals by yeah, and CMU, then, and they went back and forth. Yeah, and that's how they were able to tie it up. That scramble out in front, it ended up being Ben Haney, his second of the campaign and second in two games for Ben Haney. His his dad is the women's Division two coach, uh, Christopher Haney, uh, who has coached the women's D Division two team to a couple of fantastic seasons. They are in action next weekend against Adrian. But uh, back to this game, Haney ties up, ties up the game, and then about 10 minutes later, Jay Nadu seems to put some life back into this building. We had a great crowd on hand to see this victory. And then Gooley comes right back down the ice and ties up this game. Yeah, we didn't even have time to blink, and that was the relentless pressure in the neutral zone. Particularly Northwood impressed me by answering on Simi's mistakes. Sometimes they would get caught trying to stretch the puck ahead, make sort of a fancy play, and they'd get caught, and it would spring an odd man rush for Northwood the other way. They would direct traffic in front and force Woolery to move, which ended up being the difference, and that goal that answered was kind of wonky. You know, It kind of fluttered past his left pad, but not even on a shot. It was just trickling by, and you watched it for a mile, and it tied up the hockey game. We were at three heading into the break. Yeah, and heading into that third period, CMU was down on the shots 29-22. to Northwood came out in that first period. They played really well after that, and it led to that game being tied going into period three. But it was CMU's third period to lose, and they did not. Three goals in the first eight minutes and 15 seconds, coming all in the span of four minutes. It was Spencer Messina with his first of the campaign on the power play, and it was Jace Johnson and Nadu to follow. What an explosion of goals by CMU. This, this game-winning goal by Messina was all by the work of Nathan Bottles. You know, he had a shot 15 seconds prior to that on the strong side, left side of the net, where he always is. And Schultz made a great play, and Beamish is there, the crashing man in front. They can't get this goal in, so you think, you know, you keep the cycle going, Bottles is going to pick this puck up, he's going to wrap around like he does and shoot it again. But he makes the most unselfish play, I think, of his season. He finds an open man in Messina at the top of the right circle, wide open. Messina's not usually the shooter in this case, but he puts a great one on net, into the air, low blocker, and puts it in between the pad and the blocker. It's a terrific goal, but it's an unselfish play by Nathan Bottles, and I think that was the tone setter in this third play, third period. That was the moment that CMU said, we'll take control of this game by using our team as a unit. We'll take control of this game by systematically wearing down Northwood, and that's what they did. And, of course, Johnson would score later, followed up by Jay, or Jay Nadu. Uh, it was a good effort in that third to bounce back from all the mistakes they had. And credit to Brendan Martin and this coaching staff for getting them whipped into shape because 
boy, they needed to find a spark, and they did. Yeah, they certainly found the spark. The CMU's fourth straight win on home ice, their longest winning streak both at home and in general they've had all season. They get the job done here tonight, 6-4. Northwood did add a garbage time goal from White, his second of the game. But other than that, uh, that's all that was. Uh, that's all she wrote. CMU 0 for th- uh, 1 for 3 on the power play in that uh, in this game, and Northwood 0 for 4. So the penalty kill again, a strong performance tonight. Third straight game, they've not allowed a power play or not allowed a power play goal man advantage. That's never happened this season. They've had four times where they've gone back to back, but they've never been able to close out and move on to the next series. And Northwood had a lot of chances tonight. And same you credit to them. Batting down the hatches. We'll talk about it more here coming up. Yeah, taking a look at our impact players, uh, Omen Campbell had three assists as that top line once again showed why they are that top line. <laughs> they did. That's now, what, 13 points in the last three games. Uh, terrific stuff. You know, we went past the Illinois State Series saying, okay, let's see when they can bring this back into an MCHC team that matches up not evenly to them, Northwood, a younger team, but you wanted them to keep it going, and they did in a big way. Campbell had three assists on the night. Willard Pillman was the other impact player to watch, but even though he didn't get a point total, that's not what you're looking at for him. He came in a last-minute scratch after Sam Kamara couldn't go, and he played terrific, I thought, especially in his own end, the corners, clearing it out, doing what he's done all year, putting out flyers. And a big one, Northwood had a breakaway late in that second period. He caught up to the back of the play, negated the scoring chance, and the game remained tied. Yeah, and on the other side of the ice, you got Ben Haney and Milo Stodorovic. You picked really well tonight, Devin. Ben, uh, ben Haney gets his gets a goal in uh, the second straight game for him and Milo Stodorovic. Their leading score tacks on an assist tonight. Both of them played really well. They did, and you know Benjamin Haney playing in front of his dad, Christopher Haney, head coach of Women's D2. Uh, you know, emotional favorite, and and the big key with for CME was to shut down to Dorovic the best they could. I think they did for the most part. He had his looks. He moved the play along. You could tell he's the most skilled guy on that team, and set the tone. Assist tonight, and Northwood, great effort. He led the way. Four goals for them. Yeah, taking a look at our keys to the game, Devin. You know, you had some special teams on there. What else you got, and how they do? Well, the other one was controlling faceoffs, and that got away from them in the second, big time. So Northwood, did. a lot of those goals were on faceoff wins, getting it to the net and putting either crashing in front or making Woolery uh, put his hands up in the air. Regardless, <laughs> uh, Central reined it back in. They did okay on the faceoffs. They're never going to be perfect, right? It's it, it's a game of life. You, you can try as hard as you can, but they're probably they've never had a perfect game. Probably never will in the faceoff dots. But they did good enough to win tonight and you know the final key I had tonight was get Woolery confident let him stay confident uh, that was a, a tricky thing to see tonight um, there were points in this game where boy the, how fast as Northwood would answer you thought either you know his his equipment issues were going to take a toll or Woolery was going to somehow get rattled in this and quick goals would happen I thought he rung it back in in the third period he had a big save late with three minutes left in garbage time but it was a big save it was a good one uh, and that just put the emphasis on it that Woolery deserved four straight wins on the back of a team that helped him out defensively and cleared the lanes for him, uh, for him to come into this one as a freshman and still be able to put out good enough production to win on a night where this team's not their best is a good enough nod for him. Credit to him in there completing the keys of the game. Yeah, so Caleb Woolery uh, indeed did get a uh, did do a good job in had some good defense out in front of him. Taking a look at our three stars of the game. Third star, Owen Campbell. Three assists as he extends his point streak to six games on uh, dating back to that Grand Valley State Series. He has played some phenomenal hockey as part of that top line. He's our third star tonight with three apples. Jay Nadu getting two goals and an assist. Gets our second star here here tonight. Another member of that top line that has done a really good job here this semester. <laughs> no doubt. And, again, that's just that whole group, Campbell, Nadia Porzondik, uh, they found a spark. They've done it. And, you know, Chippewa fans probably thinking to themselves, where was this earlier? But <laughs> getting aside, they well, found it and, late. And, I mean, all season, head coach Brennan Martin has been trying to fit the jigsaw pieces of these lines together, find some chemistry, find some and finally yeah. he seems to have done that in that top line of Nadu Campbell 
and Porzonic. So Nada, your second star and your first star of the night with the game-winning goal, his first of the season. Spencer Messina on the power play with that goal gets his first star or gets the first star here tonight with his first career or first goal in a D3 uniform. Those are your three stars, Campbell, Nadu, and Messina. And that is your game recap presented by Optum X Sports. We'll step aside, take a look uh, ahead at tomorrow and the games to come and the games around the league here on the post game show. CMU 6-4 winners tonight against Northwood. Chippewa Hockey is on CCHN. Oh my goodness! The place to watch men's division three. Here's Connor Morgan out and cut for Porz on the East And women's division two. Burnett's gonna get a shot at goal and she scores! Every shift, every goal, every game. Central Michigan has turned the corner. All in one place. CCHN, your home for Chippewa Hockey. They're all smiles coming back from the break as our producer, Sam Demashinsky, fires a pen across. He's been working <laughs> double time tonight as producer and cameraman. And that was his signal to let us know we're back on air. So welcome back inside the broadcast booth. Reagan Cleaves, Devin Sarah, one final time here tonight. CMU 6-4. Victors over the North Timberwolves in the revival of the Battle of M20, something we will not see for but one more time in the D3 level. The final game of the series of all time as Northwood moving up to the M1 level is tomorrow. And looking ahead to that game, a 2.30 puck drop, CMU back to 500, Devin. How good does that feel? <laughs> Big time. Uh, you know, that midseason when they had those tough stretches against Grand Valley, Florida Gulf Coast, I think about how this team answered, how good it must feel. Yeah, the rankings don't match what this team thinks they're capable of, but to get back there after they've had some tough stretches is a great feeling. 10-10, 2-1. I'm proud of this team, first of all, for sticking with it uh, despite all of it. And... um, Boy, we're going to do it one more time tomorrow with Northwood. How about yep. that? And Northwood falling to 5-11 and 11 with that loss. They will drop once again uh, further down in the MCHC standings. Uh, CMU, though, uh, will maintain their fifth spot in the division. And this, this series has been dominated by the Chippewas. This is their 13th consecutive win against Northwood. The, their last loss coming back in 2016. How do they make it 14 tomorrow? Well, look, besides the early first and the late third, there was a lot of stuff that uh, was mistake-driven, being that they carried the puck to the neutral zone solo efforts too many times. It forced uh, odd man rushes for Northwood where they, uh, even a young team like this, that you wouldn't think would be able to bounce back from a quick 2 nothing uh, nod and advantage, did time and time again. Uh, it's a case where when they batten down the hatches on the forecheck, being that they moved it from right to left, cycled the ice, made Northwood start to chase and dump the puck again when they would get it, that was what made the difference. So for CMU tomorrow, it's about, yeah, you want the same kind of start. 2 nothing's great. That probably made the difference for them. Otherwise, Northwood could have had a lead. What you need is consistency. What you need is unselfish play here and there. You want to have fun with this one. We're getting late in the year here. We know what's what's ahead for CMU and and it's not exactly the result you want probably not looking at nationals but you still have things you need to improve on to get ready for a conference tournament where you're going to see the best of the best probably going to be the five seed probably going to see the likes of Saginaw Valley State who you really want to beat I think tomorrow's an opportunity to improve on those things of course get a win but to play consistent and play a full 60 minutes I don't know if Brennan Martin's seen that out of this team yet I don't know if we will see it all year but tomorrow's a chance to do that again your top line's going. You want to get those guys on the second line involved. Isaac Hop, by the way, should have scored many times tonight. I want to see an Isaac Hop goal. Yeah. So I want to see Isaac Hop play and get a chance at it. But yeah, dramatics certainly. aside, they just got to be consistent. Play a consistent 60 minutes. Uh, know you're the more skilled team. Keep on the fourth check. And, of course, kill the penalties. Do it all. 
and you've got to win. Indeed. So CMU tomorrow uh, against Northwood at Midland Civic Arena. Devin, you'll have the call along with Ryan Donnelly. I will be behind the scenes for that one. I've Finally. Gotta, I've got to put on the stripes <laughs> for a high school game right after that. That's so. right. <laughs> you, you sick of working with me, man? Well, you know, you don't get sick of it. You just wonder, when are you going to pull your weight, man? We've had a lot of <laughs> pull crazy my weight. scenarios you, this year. Do you want me to stop printing off game notes for you? You know, all the stats. <laughs> oh, man, the PR's tissue here. Hey, hey, hey. Buy me coffee tomorrow, and then we'll Coffee, go okay. Man. Do you like cappuccino, latte, well, mocha? What you know, do you I said earlier that I got into Folgers from that 5 a.m. Uh, headly session last night, uh, which, by the way, I could bust you on, too. But, hey, <laughs> McCafe was good, too. I want uh, double espresso with cold ice. Okay, I want to even out the temperature. Uh, no, I, I can't. I can't do guy. that for just you. Okay. Kidding. Okay. Hey. I, I wasn't gonna get you iced coffee. I, I, I would have gotten you hot coffee. You know what? I just want your kindness and appreciation, <laughs> my friend. That's all we it's need. It's been great working with you, man. For the you last too, man. three Jokes seasons. Jokes aside, and... it's been amazing, and uh, boy, I'm excited to work with you again in Michigan. So yeah, let's do it. Should be fun. All right. I'll take a look around the uh, MCHC Oakland at Michigan right now. Uh, Oakland is up on the number 13 seed, 2-1 after one. That's a big battle, and that's coming out, and that's going on right now down in Oakland. Lawrence Tech knocked off Pitt, Pitt Johnstown, uh, securing their number two, speed, two seed, 3 nothing at Clark Park, their outdoor game, their annual outdoor series. And right now, Michigan Flint uh, trailing 4-1 to Calvin, the number 11 team in the nation with six minutes left in the second. Those are your score updates. You can look on uh, each each of those teams' Twitter for a more up-to-date uh, more up to date uh, score as you go on later tonight. Grand Rapids in the American Hockey League right now up one nothing after two. No score in that second period. You can listen to that game on Wood Radio 1300, 106.9 FM. Bob Kayser has the call for you from the big orange box in northern Illinois. Uh, the Saginaw Spirit are in action against the Barry Colts tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. You can listen to that game on 100.5 WSGW. Dylan Clark has the call for you on that one. And the Wings uh, have a couple of players in the All-Star game tomorrow. I think it's, uh, what, Debrinket and is that it? I think it's just Debrinket, yeah. Debrink it, it is. So, are you yeah. watching that? I, I'll probably be honest. Not. I haven't watched a single minute of the All-Star game in probably five years. And I mean, I'm probably not going to. If, if, if Happy I was John watch Scott it. anniversary, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone remember that guy? Yeah, 2016 John, yeah, when he was, Scott was the, voted by the fans. And, and not only was he voted league. in, he was also a captain and he got the All Star MVP. <laughs> Two goals. I remember so, it well. Yeah, that was, uh, was fun. John Scott once started a fight in preseason. <laughs> well, you know what was the cool news today? Yeah. Uh, they're allowing the Olympics back in 2026, 2030. And some of the instead best of the news I've had all, we've had all year. Instead of the All Star game, 2025, they're doing a seven game tournament. Seven, or is it seven games? Right. Something like that. Pool play to decide the. International teams. next year. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, is this 2024? Holy crap! I forgot yeah, it's 2024. 2024. <laughs> next year. Yeah, next year is going to be that tournament, and we'll get a sneak peek I, at I some NHLers. I think it's going to be four different teams. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's no just going to be around Robin, and then but two yeah. years, two years from now, right before the Olympic, or right after the Olympic, or four years from now, right after the Olympics, I think they're going to have. Uh, a wider World Cup of Hockey. Yeah, that's so, what it's going to be, yeah, right? Definitely a big, big Thank, news. Finally, yeah, finally, definitely big news coming out of the NHL. Some, some NHL player involvement in international tournaments. That's something we haven't had since the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics and a couple of World Cup of Hockey events uh, since then. But some big, some big news in the NHL uh, ahead of the All Star break. Before we head out, we'd like to. Again, thank MHTV for all the equipment provided uh, tonight that allows us to bring uh, CMU D3 Club Hockey to your uh, screens. Our camera was Sam Tabashinsky. Our producer was Sam Tabashinsky. And Devin also pushed some buttons during the game. <laughs> well, Sam was running all camera. Work. But, again, Sam did a great job keeping us on the air and running camera. Uh, but, yeah, so that's it. Michael Rosencrantz. Uh, Fulfilling my rush indulgences, <laughs> playing some great music over and, the PA. And he made the goal song. He did. I did. I told you I got you, Devin. That's right. The Red Hot Chili Peppers <laughs> can't get no satisfaction. Yeah, Mo so. Hey, mono version? Mono version of uh, can't get no satisfaction? I'll have to get the mono version. Okay, okay. 
Well, great job. Thank you for doing that. Well, if you come to Martin Ice Rin it, you'll have that to look forward to. Can't get no satisfaction in the Chippewas. Oh, not for not Certainly got some tonight. Senior night next week. Oh, yeah. Big Senior night, night, against, Big night against the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, Ryan and Devin will have the preview for you for that one coming up and the post-game show of tomorrow's game when the Chippewas and the Timberwolves finish up the Battle of M20 for one final time here in this 23-24 campaign. Until next time, my name is Reagan Cleaves. For my broadcast partner, Devin Sarah, saying so long for Martin Ice Arena as the Central Michigan Chippewas come out in the third period, score three unanswered, and come out with a 6-4 win here tonight to knock off the Northwood Timberwolves. Until next time, have a, gr have a great night, everybody.